your new favorite podcast the ain't shit show the home of booze views and unpopular opinions i want to thank y'all for joining us for episode 93 nah trey blood gang suwoo my name is fresh <laughs> and i'm one half of the pod guys and with me i have the best man in all the gangster land my right hand man mr b Treyway. Treyway. Um, we ain't putting that on here <laughs> we we not we not doing Treyway up in this bitch Treyway. shit how you doing man i'm all right how you i'm good man i'm good i'm good as can be i'm breathing you know what i'm saying <laughs> It's always a blessing, indeed, <laughs> right. indeed. Right, you could be on the other side of the ground, you know. S- certainly beats the alternative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's been going on? What you been doing? Shit, I ain't do shit all weekend. I just lay low. I ain't do nothing. I don't think. I, yeah, what did I, I ain't really do? Yeah, I ain't leave the house the weekend. I mean, I left the house, mm-hmm. but I ain't do nothing. Yeah, significant. S- significant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just was laying low, bullshitting around. How was Went the weather? I smoked some dope, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> That's always a good Probably. time. Yeah, part for the course around these parts. You said the weather. The weather was, yeah. um, it rained Sunday. It rained like shit. Um, yeah, it rained like shit. I guess we got that, like, little hurricane shit or whatever, um, that came through. Right. Or a tropical storm, I guess. So Sunday it rained all day pretty much. Um, uh, well, a good portion of the day. And then Saturday, uh, it started, started raining, but it didn't really, it won't, I mean, it was cool Saturday. It was kind of, it was, you know, about 60s. Nice fall day, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. The weather was trash in Atlanta, my G. Like, it was trash. It was like... It was probably, that's probably what we got from y'all. Yeah, was it yeah. raining the whole weekend? Nah, it just rained on Saturday. Yeah, so we got what y'all got Sunday. Yeah, like, it was, like, all day. Like, I literally, like, got up. I got dressed because I was, like... I knew it was going to rain, but it said it wasn't going to rain till like, 11, 12 o'clock. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I just immediately got up. You know how you already kind of had your shit playing in your head, what you're going to do and shit. So I got up, did went to the bathroom, washed, did all that, got dressed so I could go to the gym. So my plan was to go run, like, three errands that I had to do and then go work out. And then the, the rest of my plan was to be in the house all day because it was, like, 80%, 90%, 100% rain. So I knew it was going to happen. But I didn't check. Like, I didn't check the weather and shit. Like, so I get dressed, bro. I walk out the door. Do you take a shower before you go to the gym? I do. you one of them people? I, no. Because I took a shower no. before I went to bed. Gotcha. So, no, I don't take a shower before I go to the gym. Um. But I go to the door, bro. It looked like it's fucking 7 p.m. And mm. is the wind is blowing and it's just rain everywhere. I just looked and I just turned around, went back inside. Like, I was like, yes, I'm sir. not going out in this. Like, I just went back in my crib. I didn't even yeah. exit my crib on Saturday. Like, I didn't leave besides that. It's a beautiful I, didn't, thing. I didn't leave. Nah. Well, I do want to give an update um, because I did start watching Wu-Tang. Ah, it's really good. Um, Told you. I, How far you make it? What episode uh, you made it to? To like the third. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's it? <laughs> it's an hour piece. So? Uh, I you mean, could have watched more than that. I you mean, was in the I house did, all day? Yeah, but it's not like I was just... I, I, so you're not gonna finish watching it? No, with, I am gonna finish that. watching. It. I said it was good. Yeah, you know I, mean? I am gonna finish watching it. I just, um, I am gonna finish watching it. What was a little bit harder for me in the beginning than I had to Google is because I don't know, like Wu Tang besides RZA being Bobby and Bobby Digital, I don't know like their real names and shit. So it was hard for me to follow like who was who in Wu Tang until I had to look that shit up. So then after I looked it up and figured out, you know, oh this Ghostface, this Raekwon, okay, that then, then right. it started, you know, it started, it started flowing for me. But I just think that it's crazy, like 
the whole, you know, Raekwon Ghostface thing. I don't I didn't know that. that. Shit blew I, my did, fucking I mind. didn't know that history. Like I'm not a That shit blew my mind. And I'm a woo nigga. Like I love the you know what I'm saying? Like and them niggas is like they did purple tape, you know what I'm saying? They did purple tape and fucking and fucking Iron Man. You know what I mean? Like that shit was like a combination, like a like a combination of the two, you know what I'm saying? So like that shit was amazing to me. Yeah, I, I like Wu Tang, like I like their music, but I wouldn't consider myself like a Wu enthusiast where I know like all they backstories and shit like that. Like I don't know them to that level. I just know like, you know, they hits and, you know, the the members out of it. But um Nah, that shit was crazy. I was like, yo, so like, seriously, fam, you gonna throw this Molotov cocktail? For sure. In like, the shit? Like, like with your mans in there? That's why you gotta keep watching, man. Should've oh, nah, it, it, it's, it's, it, it's last good. last episode come on tomorrow. I'm fucking sad. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that shit sucks. Like, that's good. That so by the time I get there, I'll be just finishing. I'll, I'll be finishing the shit out. Uh, I might watch an episode tonight, depending. Oh, um, but yeah, like that, that, that shit was good. Um, so I had and if you know like there. backstory, like if you seen the they had a Wu documentary, like like it was the Wu documentary was amazing because it's like footage of them and their first album, like them niggas recording Cream and all that shit. And mind you, like this is in ninety three, ninety four, so you got to remember like they had them big ass fucking um, you know, you know the the fucking camcorders and shit was fucking yeah. like, huge at that point, and they only had like ten to fifteen minutes of battery life and you know what i mean so you had shit to, like, was all fucked them up niggas, <laughs> them niggas had mad fucking footage that like i'm talking about like it's on some instagram shit like you know what i'm saying right. like some shit that you would see nowadays like god damn y'all niggas was recording like and it wasn't like you know what i mean like label shit it was just like personal people you know what i'm saying like in the crew and shit you know they were deep or whatever but i was amazed at that i'm like damn these niggas got so much shit like they record cream like you see them niggas actually in the booth recording cream like wild and dusty and you know what I mean? Yeah. Broke as hell and then kind of going through the whole transformation and shit. That shit was, that shit was really dope. It was real. It was a well done documentary. Cause, and then it goes through like Divine, which is, um, the brother. Divine is Riz's brother, his oldest brother. And he had, as you can tell, he had the business mind, right? Mm -hmm. So like he was hustling and shit. So that lends itself to like present day to the point where like, um, they beefing, you know what I mean? Not beefing, but they don't really fuck with Divine cause like they say Divine did them dirty and shit, like the rest of the members and shit. Cause he was like, you know, the manager for all intents and purposes and shit. And then he was the one who had a lot of contracts and shit and was doing every, everything to them. So, like, it shows Divine, like, in the documentary, like, he's sitting on a yacht. <laughs> like, he just sitting on a yacht in, like, a Gucci sweatsuit. Like, I don't know why them niggas mad. You know what I mean? I tried to help him. Does the, <laughs> you know does what I'm does the like, series get on shot. that? Does the series get on nah, that? They, they don't nah, get nah, that it's, far? It's, Nah, it's just, it's still in the, the early stages. Like, they ain't even on yet. You know, well, RZA get on and shit. Like, you know the story of RZA. RZA got, had, like, a deal with doing this weirdo shit, um, which I didn't know prior to the documentary. Like, you know, it was, like, Prince Rakim or some shit like that. That's kind of how he got, like, the name RZA and shit. Um, and okay. so, like, he got on first, and it was, like, real cheesy. got dropped and all that other shit, and then that's when they go through the transformation. But uh, that shit is ill, man. That shit is a dope story. Like how, like he had the vision the entire fucking time. Shout out to RZA because that nigga mind is sharp and enough to be able to like withstand a lot of the bullshit that it withstood. So you think shout it's out to Erica Alexander? She's a great actress. You think it's gonna uh, we continue? Don't give her enough credence. Yeah, shout out to Erica Alexander for sure. She does a great job. She's fucking excellent. She's a great actress. Um, yeah, I think so. I hope so. I hope it gets picked up. Uh, it's a really good show. Chris Robinson. From ATL fame and like uh, he actually went to Saint Aug too. Shout out to Saint Aug. Shout he, out um, to Saint Aug. He's a director on that shit. Him and RZA and Meth Method Man is a executive producer on the shit too. Um, that was good casting for Method yeah, Man too. Yeah, Dave East did a good job. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he does, and it's dope because like each episode kind of like highlights each member. You know, he kind of like their their ascension. You know what I'm saying? And they're like their struggles and shit. This is a dope episode. I never knew. Well, there's more shit down the line. I ain't gonna spoil it for you, but. It's really good. Y'all fuck with it. Fuck with the wolves on Hulu. Go support our black shit. Really dope. Um, do you feel like um, do, do you feel like like this is something like based on like what you know about Wu Tang? Like, do you feel like this is something that could go on for like three, four seasons if they wanted to? Like, just based yeah, on the Wu story. Enough, I mean, they got enough history. You know what I mean? Like, they got they got hours and hours and hours and, and years, I should say, of history. So yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, you could just you could just go through each individual character, you know what I'm saying? And then making their album. Cause it, it kind of, like I said, it kind of spins off like each episode kind of is dedicated to 
like one particular person, you know what I'm saying? Like after like the three, the third and fourth, it kind of mm-hmm. like goes into each member, um, like specifically like old dirty. Well, not really. It's more so based on Bobby, which yeah. is Bobby digital. Yeah. RZA, but then like, it kind of has like a meth episode. This last episode was kind of, um, uh, like ghost and Ray's relationship, you know what I'm saying? And ghost's relationship and Ray's relationship and how he kind of came to, I don't know. It's like, it's one dude like that kind of brought them all together. This one dude that, uh, a police officer end up killing in the hood and shit and like choked out and shit in front of every fucking body. And that kind of brought them together. This shit is a really dope story, man. Yeah. They got a, they got a wild story. It's a really dope series. I mean, I'm only, I'm only three episodes in, but it, um, it is, it is very interesting and it make me look at them differently because even though I like, you know, like, uh, Wu Tang's music, like, like the hits that they had and shit like that. Like it was so many of them niggas. That I never knew, like, how many fucking members of Wu-Tang is it, really? Like, how many of them is it? It's members, but, like, actual... Rappers? How many were in the uh, actual group? Uh, RZA, Jizza, Deck, Ghost, Ray, Mess. Ray. Um, Master Killer, Capadonna, and fucking You Got. So... You said Old Dirty? Old dirty. How could I forget yeah, old dirty? <laughs> Look, like, my apologies. That's ten. Yeah. Off game. That's who I knew. Whoever does, whoever does, whoever does the the nigga. I thought it was old, old dirty son because he got like a son that actually goes on tour with the Wu now. Yeah, he corny as fuck. Like I, I watch, I watch growing up hip hop. He on that joint. Oh okay. Yeah, he but he a the wild nigga that's boy. Playing old dirty does a great job. Yeah. Like that nigga's fucking excellent. Like he does a really really good job. I was like, like I thought yeah. it was the son. He looked a lot of like him. He sound like him and all that shit. Yeah, old dirty son is a little bit like heavier. That nigga wild. Like if 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 y'all watch growing up hip hop New York, like old dirty son wild. Like he just want to have a, like a bunch of babies and like he just say wild shit. Just like his dad. Just like old dirty. Like he just say mm-hmm. wild shit and you like niggas be having conversations with him and shit and they be like what the fuck? Like, I don't even know what we talking about no more. Like, that nigga just be going off on tangents and shit. And like, his sister is like his um manager and shit like that. So they show like this episode where it's like his birthday and shit. And he like vegan, I guess. He a thick ass vegan, but he uh he vegan, I guess. <laughs> he tastes the cake and shit and just slam the shit like. Because he said the shit not vegan. Like, and his sister went out his way to, like, buy him, like, this vegan cake and shit. Like, he wild. Like, he, whatever Old Dirty has, he's either mimicking Old Dirty or he has whatever mental disconnect that Old Dirty had. Like, mm. it is shit crazy. But, yeah, he definitely he goes on tour and does, like, his dad's parts and shit like that. So, it's crazy. It's crazy. But, yeah, he just want to have, like, a rack of kids, like. Yeah, all them niggas is family too. Like Jizza, Jizza and Rizza and Old Dirty, them niggas is all like first cousins and shit too. So, yeah, so, so good, on man. the show, like Old Dirty, and he goes by Young Dirty Bastard. So YDB, uh, YDB is trying to get with Flavor Flav daughter, and Flavor Flav like, yeah, so that's your cousin. Like you can't fuck with him. So really, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So he was like, "What she look like?" She looked like light skin flavor Flav. Flavor Flav <laughs> is like Little Wayne. He has very strong genes, and all of his kids are like different complexions and shit, and different mm. sizes. But you see flavor fucking Flav. Like she's. I remember his mom was like, look, he looked just like his mom. Oh, okay, well then that's what it is. Flavor, remember from Flavor of Love and shit. Oh yeah, I do remember his mom, his mom going on, on that. Uh, Damn. Yeah. Shout out to I Tiffany Pollard. <laughs> Shit, shout out to Hoops. Shout out to Delicious. Shout out to Hoops. Shout out to Hoops for sure. But yeah, you know, they trying to get the get together. I mean, I don't think she the prettiest girl, but you know what I'm saying? She cool. She got confidence and shit like that. She a bigger girl. You know. Oh, word. And she managed uh Flavor Flav's son name is Flea. He trying to be like a rapper and shit. And you know it's 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 growing up hip hop. So if you watch growing up hip hop, um, I did not know that shit even still came on. <laughs> yeah, they got different cities and shit. Growing up hip hop oh, wow. Atlanta, growing up hip hop LA, and growing up hip hop New York. 
Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all that shit going on. But I'm a reality TV correspondent. Yeah, of course. You the YouTube correspondent and podcast correspondent. I'm the reality TV correspondent. Um, yeah, man. But um speaking of music, um I wanna give a shout out to Rihanna and Cardi for putting me on to my two new favorite songs. Um Cardi posted uh Partisan Fontaine, also known as Party, Shea Butter, that shit go. Uh Rihanna posted Russ and Bia's Best on Earth. That shit go. Did you hear that shit? Yeah. Russ and Bia. Pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty dope. That is interesting because I know of Bia from reality. She was on Sisterhood of Hip Hop. And she was. I watch <laughs> reality TV, bro. Like <laughs> I do. I like hip hop. I like reality was that TV. Sisterhood of Hip Hop was that the shit with um the gay um young and May bitch Sire. Like <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, Sire. She was on there. Bia was bad. on there. Um, uh, Diamond from Crime Mob was on there. Um, I used to watch. I watched that. I watched a couple episodes of that shit. Yeah. Why you acting like you too good? <laughs> like your TV better and shit. But, um, it is. it's not, <laughs> you watch shit. People ain't even got no deals for it. They just on YouTube and shit. Oh, um, but Bia is dope because I'm, I'm, I know a little bit about Russ, but, uh, I know Bia has been trying to, uh, get her foot in the door, not get in the door. Cause she been on shit, but she was signed to Pharrell and all that, but she just ain't been able to pop like she wants to. And once Rihanna posted that shit, I thought it was Rihanna because her accent sound a little bit like Rihanna. So I was like, yo, this is Rihanna. But then I read the caption and shit. Um, but shout out to Bia because Bia can rap like shit. And, um, you know, if this is the way for her to get on, like I'm, I'm all about that. Um, so shout out to those two for putting those two songs on. And, uh, Wale. She Wa- also posted Chris Brown, um, joint too. That's my shit. What, what she posted Chris Brown? Oh, when she posted the makeup shit. Mm-hmm. What song was that? Uh, I can't remember. Hold okay, on. I'll tell you in just a second. Why you? While you looking up that? So, uh, Wale album drop. Wale album is great. It's called Wild. That's crazy. I've been listening to that, um, over and over again as well. Um, good music. Wale is highly underrated. What's her? Um, what's her Instagram? Who? Uh, Chris. Uh, Rihanna. Bad girl. Yeah. Riri. Oh yeah. That's it. Um. So yeah, if y'all looking for some good music, uh, Wale shit dope, and those two songs are are, are dope as fuck. Oh yeah, uh, it's Indigo. The Indigo, the title track. That's my fucking shit. Indigo is a great album, man. It's a really good album. Niggas be fronting on Chris, but that nigga got crazy, crazy songs off that album. But the the title track to his album is what she posted to the, which was like the soundtrack to her shit. I think that's good that you know that they're, you know. Getting along from a public mm-hmm. standpoint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That shit is hard. I fucking love that song. I'm gonna listen to that album later on. It's a great album. What else you listening to besides things you've already mentioned on the show? Anything new? Nah, shit. Nah, I ain't listening to nothing new, really. No. Yeah, I ain't listening to nothing new. Um. So let me tell you this shit. I, I it's really more so of a rant. So this weekend, Sunday, I'm coming home and shit. And I'm home. Like, I'm pulling into, like, my complex and shit. And the lights come on. Woo woo! I'm looking like the fuck. Well, Trina? <laughs> I wish shit was Trina pulling me over. It was the mm. fucking cops. So. You saying you had a fat ass. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm literally pulling into my complex. So I'm like, what the fuck is up? Although, uh, earlier that day, I was a plus one at a Falcons game. Uh, uh, thanks for getting me uh, super drunk. I told you I don't spend shit at NFL games purposely. Um, but, uh, and went out like later. So drinking, smoking, having a good time, whatever. But I'm home now. So I'm just like, I know I ain't do no shit. You know what I'm saying? So the officer put, I roll my window down. He comes up to the side of the car. So I'm like, yes. And he's like, so, you know, you have, so, you know, the, um, license plate, like border thing, like 
you can buy one or if you buy your car from mm. somewhere, it automatically had that on it, right? So my shit say Michael Jordan, Nissan, because that's where I got my car from. It's been on there. I'm not attached to the shit. It's just what was on my car. I just never, like, cared to remove the shit, right? Mm. So the nigga, like, yeah, so, you know, like, uh, you shouldn't have those types of borders around your license plate because, you know, we can't tell what state it is, X, Y, Z. So I'm thinking, I'm just like, I'm pretty sure you can see my whole plate. Like, I'm pretty sure, but I ain't about to argue with this nigga because they just want a reason. You know what I'm saying? They want a reason to shoot you. They want a reason to arrest you, like whatever the case may be. So I was like, okay, so you just want me to remove that? And he's like, yeah, but first, give me your license. Let me make sure you're a lawful driver in Georgia. So I'm like, okay, I know I ain't got shit going on with that. So I I willingly give it to him. Here, here you go and shit, right? So then he comes back to the car after having me sit there for like 10 minutes and shit. So I guess he was like looking, looking for some shit. So he comes back to the car and he says, uh, here you go. And he gives me like something that looks like a ticket, but it has warning across it. So he's like, here, here's a warning, you know, next time if we pull you over, then you'll have monetary damages for having this on your car because we need to see what state it is and we're unable to see what state it is. Don't you, you still got North Carolina tax? No. So let me finish. So I pull in, park my shit. So immediately I get out and look at my fucking tax. So I'm like, yeah, I've been drinking and shit, but I remember what my shit looked like, bro. My shit say Georgia. (laughs) You can see the whole Georgia. Not Mm. only that, you can see the whole Fulton County is big as shit. But on top of that, there's a humongous peach in the middle of my tags. Like, come on, bro. Like, you just wanted to fuck with me. Yeah. And they, DWB. Exactly. Exactly. That Driving wild up. black. And and what they do is they try to fuck with you so you can have some type of reaction. So they'll have a reason to accost you in some way. You know what I'm saying? So like that hey, shit man, pissed shit me lame. off. That shit was lame as fuck, bro. Like, I was like, seriously? Like it's literally covering nothing, bro. Like it's covering nothing. You was just I'm looking for lame. a reason to act a fool. Like mm. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, when I got in the house, like, I was pissed off and shit. But I was just like, you know what? I was drinking and I was smoking. So, he could have been an asshole and asked me to fucking get, get out the car, take a breathalyzer, some shit like that. I mean, I wasn't driving, like, I wasn't fucked up or nothing like that. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I did come from where I came from. So, I was just like, you know what? That's the only thing that's going to help me get over this at this moment in time. Like, you have to think of some type of silver lining. But that shit really pissed me off, bro. I ain't going to need lie. Like, yeah, that's a shit. Let's just say, just for white folks listening, just another day in the life. Exactly. Of being of black, a black person. Why y'all act like racism don't exist and all this. Sure. And y'all act like we constantly perpetuate the shit and, and talk about the shit. This is our life like every single day. And I get it. You wouldn't understand, but don't diminish it. That That's just my whole thing. Like, mm-hmm. don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't, don't diminish my struggle. That's a fact, Jack. Yeah, that shit crazy. Um, shit crazy. did you go? You said you didn't go to church this Sunday. You don't go to church, right? Like on a regular. Nah, basis. I'm not. I'm not a church goer. You see that that video of uh Pastor David E. Wilson? Pastor was fucking that pussy up, boy. You hear me? <laughs> Pastor got some hoes hot and bothered. I sent it to a couple of people I knew. They was like, "Yeah, damn." That's I was got like, me horny in this bitch. <laughs> uh, well, I wouldn't say that, but I was just like, I'm disgusted yet impressed for him being an old ass man, like. That nigga was butt naked and they was going, <laughs> going nuts. That nigga won't even look up. That nigga was all, he was all out with it. The game ain't dirty, it's just the niggas in it. <laughs> that nigga was turned. Hey. Pastor, pastor, I, I wish I, I wish I could have went to service. I would have went to service on Sunday though, just to see how he shook back from that shit. Hey, he posted some shit like, listen, I like pussy. Like, that's what it is. But sir, like, that's fine and all. However, you're married. And a pastor, oh, and there? that's a member of your congregation. <laughs> like, mm. there's a lot of things here that makes that yeah. wrong. Yeah, he flesh. 
Yeah, the flesh is weak. The flesh he is, is flesh. weak. No better Man. than you and I. <laughs> right. So, like, that's my whole thing, like, about people who put, like, their pastors and whatever on, like, these fucking high-ass levels. Like, they ain't shit like the rest of us. Like. Yeah. Yeah, them niggas is flesh, man. Them niggas is human. They got them. They flawed. They feet hit the ground like ours do every morning. Same. What? Warm-blooded humans do you lose respect for that person that comes in three sundays from now trying to preach to you about some of the same shit they doing With- no nah, i don't i mean i i would listen to well i mean I, I take it all with a grain of salt right like so i mean for me personally um i look at pastors and you know people that quote unquote are anointed and hear things from god we all hear things from god i think Facts. everybody has their conscience is what you hear from God. That's your direct portal to the Lord. Um, I don't know if I said that on this podcast. I think I have, but um, it's anyway. okay to say it again. It's it's totally yeah, okay. For sure. But um, but in terms of like I said, like you can't tell, like don't try to ridicule me for something that you've done that you continue to do. You know what I mean? Like you can you can't cast your aspersions on me uh, when you fucking up. You know what I'm saying? Like I think from the best pastors make it. Like when it's reality, you know what I mean? Like I would like to, I, the best pastors make the people who are just as flawed as anybody. You know what I mean? Like I, you can certainly preach to me in terms of like the things that can be done and that should be done and what are best. It'd be great. I'd, I'd prefer you to, to be walking in that, but at the same time, like you might be walking in that particular, um, uh, you know, persona as far as doing what's right, but also at the same time, you could be at the home, at home beating off and shit, like having a crazy mask. You know what I mean? Like having a porn asphyxiation or some shit like that. So I don't know, man. Uh, asphyxiation was definitely not the word for that, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, porn addiction, um, pretty much. But yeah, porn addiction. Um, you might like the asphyxiation in uh, porn. Facts. You might like to be choked and shit. But, um, Genre but like- yeah. Yeah, word. But, um, I mean, yeah, I, I, like I said, I take it all with a grain of salt, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Motherfuckers is, is is human, just like me. I can I can get up on the pool put and tell my testimony, you know what I'm saying? And that my shit that shit might resonate with somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And 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 or may not, you know what I mean? So yeah. you know, it is what it is. I enjoy certain aspects of it, but like I said, it's it's all just, you know. Yeah. Somebody's interpretation of what Fact. they think is right or wrong. So I take it with a grain of salt. My my thing is with anyone, regardless of what you do, how you do it, like I just wanna respect you. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it, even it, it's it's when you come in with like that hypocritical holier than thou right. shit and then we come to find out. I would rather have like a preacher, pastor, whoever who be like, look, this is what I'm dealing with. I'm trying to get all of us better versus I'm the shit. Y'all need to try to get into heaven and I'm the nigga that's going to get you there. Like that's different. Like that's like a different messaging to me you know what i'm saying and a lot of black churches i don't know about white churches because i don't really go to those but that's i guess in the white church they just touching little boys um but in the black church you know it's this whole persona of this is the ultimate like the congregation in the black church most of the time look at the preacher and the pastor as the second coming of jesus you know what i'm saying like sure. it's you are the person where aspire you're jesus on earth you're god on earth you know what i'm saying and yeah, nah. that's where the problem comes in when you talking about you know infidelity homosexuality and all these other things and then fast forward to 9 p.m and you ears deep into somebody's uh taco and it ain't your wife and it's yeah. a member of your church and she recorded you that was a setup yeah. in the first place the funny thing about that is is they said that she was trying to get a solo in the church in the choir i don't know if that's true or not but that's wow to fuck the preacher for uh the lead and go tell it on the mountain Shit, bitches done did worse for less. <laughs> hey, she was trying to be in Sunday service. She was trying to be in Kanye Sunday service. That nigga crazy. <laughs> hey, that shit super wild. But, you know, I think we talked about it on the last show. I told you somebody said they walked into the sex party and they fucking passed there was strapped down and some BDSM type shit. 
I believe it, man. Nigga, hey, niggas, niggas is weird, man. Niggas, is, niggas like to have sex, and that shit ain't, you know, the good book ain't stopping none of that. And niggas just need to admit that, like, shit, yeah, this is what it sure. is. I get it. The flesh is yeah. weak. We do things all the time. We know that we shouldn't, or it's gonna be a problem later, and we do it anyway. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta have some type of self control, or like. Would you go to um? Would you go to a marriage counselor that's divorced? Yeah, uh, I take. Yeah, I would. Um, and I walk in there and and see what's good, and then if it ain't for me, and then I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I they shit. I talk take advice. Like I said that before on this. I take advice from anybody that's been through something. I take advice from a homeless motherfucker not how to be homeless. You know what I'm saying? They, I'm pretty sure they took a left turn. It got them to be homeless. So what was that left turn? Boom, got you. Won't be taking that left turn. Won't be going down that street. Um, so, yeah, I talked to, a, you know what I mean, a marriage counselor that's, you know, I mean, and like I said, I take everything with a grain of salt, you know what I mean, to the point where it's like, oh, okay, well. You'll go to you a know. fat nutritionist? Um, <laughs> it depends. It's just I mean, very shit. interesting because some of our – jobs directly correlate to who we should be like who we should represent yeah. if we're in a particular role you know what i'm saying yeah i mean i, I don't know about a fat nutrition but uh, <laughs> that's where i, mean, I draw hell, the shit. line like, fat nutrition yeah i mean <laughs> you know I will, we'll go through it like if i get in there and like they got a nutritionist and she there she hey she might got a phd in nutrition she ain't taking her own advice i can't fuck yeah. with you i'm just saying fresh can't fuck with you if if you can't you walk, practice what you preach. Yeah, exactly. If I'm, if you are a paid professional, right. you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you definitely gotta practice what you preach. You know what I'm saying. Practice what you <laughs> preach. Shout out to Barry White. Uh, that's exactly what it is. How you feel about Beyonce being the 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 second most beautiful on this Greek Golden Ratio beauty scale? Um, I mean, under how, Bella how Hadid. Can fucking I can fucking an algorithm say who's fine and who's not. You know, because I mean? like, it's I, racist. Yeah, that shit is weird. I don't subscribe to it. Um, I don't feel like Beyonce is the most beautiful woman in the world. One, um, she's a very pretty lady, but I I can name about ten women that are prettier than her from our hue, um, and our ethnicity. So yeah. that's just me. But uh, that shit was all bullshit. And the and the group that she was coupled with, like she smoked all them bitches. Like that was my here. whole thing about it. Like I'm with you on like. I love Beyonce and I think she is very beautiful. Um, and I think we all have a different standard of what we feel is beautiful. But when we talking yeah, about sure. fucking Bella Hadid. I don't even know who the fuck that is. Bella Hadid, she a model. So you, you know what she look like, like black models and white models is different. Like, so she looks mm -hmm. like a model. She has a very, like, to me, she has a very like angular face. Mm -hmm. Like she has a very like strong, like cheekbone, like, you know, like how white models look, but like you in there, like Katy Perry on this list, bro. Really? Katy Perry is like number nine. Nah, I'm a chill. Natalie Portman is on this list. Natalie Portman. I Kate Moss is on this list of top yeah, ten. Scarlett yeah, Johansson. Yeah, I be knowing these names. I don't know. I don't be knowing none of the whites. All right, so all right, so here we go. Like Beyonce, number two. Ariana Grande is number four. Now, don't get me wrong, Ariana Grande is not unattractive at all. But right. she ain't, so you telling me, like, Ariana Grande is just two steps below Beyonce, beauty-wise? Ariana Grande nah, looked 12. Sure. Like, I don't she, know. Yeah, you know, most beautiful 12-year-old you ever seen. <laughs> right. thought ass 12-year-old Taylor Swift is on this list, but she just looked like your standard issue white girl to me. Taylor Swift's pretty girl, but like just face wise. As far wise. as like white girls are concerned. I mean, it's just beauty. You think I mean, she stands out? Like if Taylor Swift wasn't Taylor Swift, you think she would so stand think out in a group yeah, of white girls? Yeah, I think girls? so. I'm like, damn, she's a pretty white girl. I think, I mean, she, like I said, she don't body wise. Like I'm, I'm maybe superficial in the sense that I like try to. You like, whole, you like uh, curvy I like bodies. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just like a nice, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, hell yeah, I like you know, voluptuous and curvaceous. And you like Afrocentric bodies. Yeah, I just like, yeah, I just like Curvy fucking, women, yeah. Yeah, I just like some some um, depth perception or <laughs> some type of 3D. <laughs> depth it's perception. Like, it's just not like straight as a board. Right, that's, that's the right. But, I mean, face-wise, she's a very pretty girl, I think. I mean. I think she's just a white girl, like. 
to me, like it's nothing Michelle, super spectacular she's, about she's her. She's not top of the top top billing in terms of white white girl. Yeah, I, what I found very interesting about this because they want our rhythm and not our blues, right? So all of the articles didn't most majority of the articles that I saw didn't say Bella Hadid is named um world's most beautiful woman. It said Beyonce is named second okay. world's hmm. most beautiful woman to Bella Hadid. So Beyonce is still the headline and she right. wasn't even number one. So she's second, but she's still your clickbait. Right. It's just very interesting. Pay attention. Stay woke, people. Stay woke. Um, but basically, this is uh basically about, I guess, symmetry. Mm-hmm. Being mathematically perfect. But when we talk about that math, they say it's based on like Egyptian Greek shit with Egyptian people are black. So that is like, huh? And then we and the Egyptians taught the Greeks, so Yeah. <laughs> so it's like just like taught them everything they know. Yeah, so it's like, this, let me see this math equation that you have going on. And just because that was attractive then, is it attractive now? Because yeah, most people don't even have their real face anymore, to be completely honest. blowing off pie and shit. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Y'all use the abacus to come up with these fucking numbers and shit. That shit right. antiquated and shit. Um, let's go into Brown and Proud really, really quickly. Uh, Shaq. Shout out to Shaq. Uh, Shaq's always doing doing some great things. But this week, Shaq purchased a house that is handicap accessible for Isaiah Payton, who's 12, and Damian Spears, who's 15, who got shot on October 17th after a football game and were left paralyzed. And they were unable to be released to their home because they lived in like a one bedroom apartment and it wasn't accessible for like their handicap and shit. So Shaq bought them a whole home um, in Atlanta. Shout out to the big Shaq. This shout out to Shaq. That's super big dumb. Aristotle. You got smoked by Damian Lillard, though, but <laughs> shout out to you. <laughs> that beef is hilarious. That shit was fire. The nigga Dane Lillard, like Dane Lillard, is fucking excellent at rap. He smoked fucking Shaq. We don't talk. We ain't talk about it. But that nigga smoked fucking Shaq twice. Like Shaq first one was a little okay, but it was like super fucking rusty as far as the audio goes. And I don't know why they didn't like. Shaq was like, never fire though. So like, did Shaq but, like, ever I don't have know a chance? Why he had. He didn't fucking like mix his verse. Like you have. I'm pretty sure you got access to a studio. You got. He did that shit on the iPhone. Homes. That yeah, shit true. was crazy. Um, but Dame smoked that nigga though. That shit was hard. As as does uh, Damian Lillard want to be a rapper? Mm, well, he's just put out an album, so. Oh, word? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah, you listen Dame. to the whole album? Yeah, he dope. Dame's super dope. You think he has a career in hip-hop? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's going to have a career. I don't know if it's going to translate, but, I mean, he can. He he's an exceptional artist. He can rap very well, makes very, really good music, good beat selection. I fuck with Dame. He nice. Nice. Uh, then shout out to former, uh, Dallas Mavericks star Harrison Barnes and Philadelphia Eagles player Malik Jackson, who decided to pay for the funeral of, uh, at Tatiana Jefferson. Sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Um, who was shot recently in her home. We talked about her on the last, um, episode. Um, they paid for a funeral. Uh, I think both of these things are really, really dope. I think that, you know, using your 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 fame and using your money for things like this, uh, people who you don't even know, I, I, I just think that's dope because the price of this house or the, or the price of this funeral, like somebody could have easily bought a chain and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, they, and, the, and the price of this chain or the price of this bracelet can like help people or like, change somebody's life like that's goals for me like i want to be in a position to help people out you know what i'm saying like of course i'm gonna help my family out that's a that's a not started right there but like other people that you just have no connection to and be like you know what let me get that let me pay for that so that's dope 
Um, so shout out to those guys. Um, you ready to get into some pop culture? You ready to get into some lit or shit? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So lit or shit is our pop culture segment where we talk about all the fuck shit on your timelines. Uh, B, are you on anything today? Nah, man, I ain't even had time. <laughs> I, I was got home like eight fifteen. I had to get my kids ready for bed and all that shit. So I ain't even had the time to indulge any of my vices. Oh man, so sober as a gopher. Oh damn. Well, I'm 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 drinking for you. I am. Uh, I like the way uh, the wine had me last time. So I'm drinking wine again. Mm-hmm. Um, some wine that. Uh, I got like two bottles of this shit now. I actually got it at, I think it's called Jacob or something like that. I got it at a wine tasting. And so I bought mm, another bottle, sm- but. It's fancy, fancy. <laughs> Jacob is fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Jacob is fancy. Oh, so, well, I will put my cup up and you can put your imaginary cup up. That's some good water for you. <laughs> Get some high quality H2O. Great movie. And let's t- let's toast to the water boy and to uh this new Gucci interview. Let's see what the Gucci has a bee in his bonnet. So uh, Gucci man uh basically slammed Angela Gee and DJ Envy. And here's <laughs> he fucking Ange- with, uh fucking Webby. Angela Gee and DJ Envy? What I say? Was, your your ye was a little My wild. ye was a little <laughs> It was like Gee. It was like, it was weird. Like, Charlotte McGay. Charlotte McGay. And look at the league. Goddamn, y'all got some names. First of all, <laughs> you will never put me on a Webby or Floyd Mayweather status. Oh, that shit was so funny. Like, <laughs> That's like, like the like, bottom. <laughs> like, my two year old nephew could probably read better than them niggas. But, uh, Charlotte McGay. Um, yeah, Angela so, <laughs> Gucci Slam, Angela Yee, and DJ Envy. I hate and, with the enunciation. In response to his claims that he was banned from the Breakfast Club, uh, going back just to give y'all some background information, in 2016, uh, Gucci Man appeared on the Breakfast Club, and um, he said that basically, Angel, Angel, now I'm fucking up for real. <laughs> Shalom, Fuck Shalom you McGay. guys. Fuck you. Shalom, <laughs> Shalom again. <laughs> I'm going to just call her Yee, like I always call her. Uh, um, he said that Yee basically tried to pursue him sexually. Yee said that never happened. It never went down like that. Some uh, internet shit went back and forth, where, like, recently Gucci reposted it and said that he was banned. Um and it, it was just crazy. So, in a YouTube video on Monday, Gucci sat down with Charlemagne or Charlemagne Gay in a in a clip called "Growth with Gucci," a conversation with Gru- Gucci Man and Charlemagne the God. Jesus, fuck you up today. Yo, you 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 did that. <laughs> Listen, y'all, don't let nobody Somebody did this. Don't let nobody enter your spirit. Don't let nobody. <laughs> Don't let nobody Jesus, fuck, fuck you, you up, up bro. You the, you the backwards, you the, the fucking Gucci symbol. You got the fucking G's going every which you got them way. <laughs> this your fault. Fuck you, man. Damn. The that, fucking Jacob Wine. <laughs> right. That Jacob Wine, that motherfucking B Hill. You got in my spirit. God, release him from my spirit. In the interview, uh, Gucci was asked about the band rumors. He said it came from that punk ass bitch. Referring to Angela Yee. Mm-hmm. And he said, DJ Envy, he a pussy too. He's a pussy, man. He said, I'm a, he said he's going to confront uh, DJ Envy. He said he going to slap the shit out of him. And he said that it's because when they went back on the show and after Gucci posted whatever he posted about Angela Yee, um, they had a... a people's court what they call it people's court yeah they had a people's court and basically saying whose side are they on gucci's or angela gee and 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 callers called in into the breakfast club and most of them sided with angela gee um he called them some fucking whores and all this shit so for whatever reason Charlemagne went and did this offset gucci interview they talked about other things too like about his life and about his growth and a lot about how Keisha Dior um helped him I need to know be like 
why is Gucci so mad about this? Because based on what I saw, like Angela Gee definitely denied in 2016 that he was like, she was like, nah, that's not how that went down. The clip came out from the lip service or whatever. Why is Gucci so mad? Because everybody on Breakfast Club saying, no, nah, he was not banned. Like, we don't know where this coming from. You know any background on this that we don't know? Uh, I mean, from what you said and, uh, on the show, that she said that he wasn't banned. She just didn't feel comfortable with um, with doing the, with doing the, uh, the interview with him there. Okay. You know what I mean? So, like, he could have he come up there with Yee. I mean, excuse me, with Charlemagne and um, with Envy. And she said she just wasn't going to be there because she don't, you know, fuck with the dude enough, you know what I'm saying? Which mm-hmm. I can understand that, you know what I mean? He's made it uncomfortable for, you know, the yeah. situation and shit and been weird. So, um, I don't know if it's been weird, but he just felt how he felt. And I guess she felt how she felt. So, I guess she don't want to entertain that energy, which I can, you know, totally Yeah, respect. I can understand that. Um, it's my platform. I don't necessarily have to have you on here. Yeah, for sure. And I think yeah. the way they even do their interviews is like, it's got to be two thirds of the room. You know what I'm saying? So like two out of three yeah. decide that they want to do the interview and then they all roll and, you know, somebody don't want to do it. They, they can just schedule it for a day. They're not going to be there or whatever. Yeah. Um, But I, in terms of that, that's what I heard about that. Um, But Charlamagne said, he's like, you ain't banned. You know what I'm saying? And the interview, it was a really good interview. If you ain't check, if you ain't I saw to most it, really of dope. it. I didn't get to finish it though. Yeah, it was dope. I enjoyed it. Um, I think Charlamagne did a good job of kind of remaining neutral. You know what I'm saying? Like not feeding into anything, and just kind of asking, asking the questions that niggas wanted to hear. Um, but good, and I he, and it looked like he wasn't even gonna bring up the shit with with Ye and them. But um, Gucci was like, "Fuck that!" You know what I'm saying? Like he kind of just made it a point to speak towards it towards the end. Um, but yeah, Gucci's still nuts. That's he's just sober. I think Gucci's the same Gucci. He's just sober. You know what I'm saying? I, that's the only part that I was happy to see. <laughs> because yeah. I was like, oh shit, old Gucci leaking back out. You know what yeah, I mean? Nah, from, he's still the same Gucci. Home. Like he's just I mean, he just in a better space. Like he ain't finna fuck up the check and let other niggas fuck his shit up like how I did. But like even him getting arrested, like <laughs> the story was like he was like he walked down and shit and the nigga was saying like uh, he's like, yeah, I'm glad. He's like, you know, I was going to, I was niggas had broken into my studio. It was like my homeboys and shit. And then them niggas was talking tough over the text. He's like, I'm going down there to shoot them niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I was going to get my shit back. He was dead serious. You know what I'm saying? He was like, them niggas called the police on me. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, Charlamagne was like, yeah, well, guess God was with God was with y'all that day. He was like, shit, God was with them. Oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, despite him going to jail and getting sober and getting clean and you know what I mean, kind of like having that that awakening so to speak like you can still it's still a lot of resentment in his heart for that same situation he Charlamagne asked him about the nigga that chick tried to kill him he was like do you think in hindsight you know that um that he you know didn't deserve to die he was like I, fuck that hell nah that nigga tried to kill me what you mean <laughs> he, was like, that that. He, he in the right place that nigga tried to kill me totally agree with all that so i think it was a really good interview um you know Dude, you said you said charlie you said charlamagne remain neutral and you mm-hmm. think that was a good thing that he remained neutral i mean yeah as a journalist yeah i mean you can't really like what's he supposed i don't i don't think he's supposed to buck and like you know what i'm saying like he i mean even to the point where like not where he because it, it didn't seem to me that he was like like i said picking sides or taking sides like he even tried but to say should like, he have he, taken a side well he did he said i'll get y'all on the phone he's like it's not that big you know what i'm saying that big of a deal i think y'all blowing this shit out of proportion i can get y'all on the phone and gucci was like nah I'm straight. I'm going to see them niggas and I'm going to, you know, when I see Envy, I'm going to slap the shit out of them. You know what I'm saying? And Charlamagne was like, nah, man, it ain't even, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, just, I, I didn't, like, see, I I that didn't see that. I didn't see all that. I saw where Charlamagne, like, kind of kept kept the shit rolling. Like, I, he did say, you know, like, I do remember him saying, like, it ain't like that. But, like, he called Ye a bitch. He said it was going to smack. He said it was going to smack Envy. So, like, my question is, at what, like, at what point, like, do your loyalties lie versus your job? Because it wasn't paramount that Charlemagne had to do this interview. Like it wasn't like a career ending or making interview, right? At what point in time, like, is it does your loyalties kick in that you just had to do this interview with Gucci? I mean, it's still gonna boost the boot. It's still gonna boost the, the Breakfast Club because Charlemagne is synonymous and tied with the Breakfast Club. You know what I mean? So like. 
it's still going to still do numbers. It's still going, they still posted it on the Breakfast Club website on their YouTube fan. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still a poster. The Breakfast so Club the loyalty is lying likes. Not likes, but I mean, it, it, it garnered some, some attention either way. You know what I mean? Like, he said, he was like, in a, I think it was on, he was on Charlemagne's, I mean, excuse me, on T.I. podcast last week, and which was a really good podcast too. Um, but he, T.I. asked him, he was like, so, like, how does the relationship with you and Envy and Yee? He was like, He's like, I don't talk to them niggas. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was like, we talk at work, and that's it. He's like, we're coworkers. You know what I mean? He's like, I mean, Envy, you know, we might bust it up, you know, a couple times. That's what Charlamagne like, said? Mm-hmm. He was like, I don't, you know what I'm saying? He was like, Damn. I do my own thing. Yeah. He was like, I do my thing, they do that thing. You know what I'm saying? He was like, we work together. We we got a a good relationship and chemistry on, the, on the air and shit and at work, but that's pretty much it. You know what I mean? So, um, this was before the obviously the podcast dropped and shit or the interview rather dropped, but but yeah, I mean it's just a working relationship, you know what I'm Damn, saying? Damn, so I, I think, thought they was cooler than that. Nah, I mean I don't think they're they're not cool. Uh, yeah, you know what like, I'm saying? Like y'all just work yeah, homies and shit. Like, yeah, that's pretty much how it is. Just like how you got. I mean, I got work friends. Like, but if I stop working with at that particular job, like we was talking about that shit today, where like motherfuckers be all like. Oh, I'm so sad that you're leaving. You're not really. Because as soon as that motherfucker leave, like, two weeks from now, you're probably not going to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, more times than not. Like, I know a lot of people that I, it's a few people that I keep in contact with from previous jobs. But overall, more times than not, it's really nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you and several other people. Like, a handful of people I still keep in touch with. But that was because they were my friends before. Or we we developed such a great bond while we at work that, you know, it it transcended itself outside of the work. But, um. I don't know. I mean, granted, I never made millions and millions of dollars with people either. Yeah. So. Um, they just seem like they have, like, a, a different type of camaraderie. But I understand it. If that's that's the way that it is, then I understand it. Because, like, the way I was thinking about the shit, like, where I'm looking at it, I'm just like, if I'm doing an interview with somebody, I'm not about to let them disrespect you. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, I'm not about to let them be like, oh, I smacked the shit out of b Hill, like. Nah, bro, like, we ain't about to do that right now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you can have your beef with B-Hill, you know what I'm saying? Right. But a- as, your, as, as, as your nigga, I'm not about to just let somebody disrespect you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I you see. can have your grievance and you can have whatever. And he, I would even be okay with him stating what his grievance is about you. Right. But mm-hmm. I wouldn't you're not about to like call my nigga a bitch and say you're gonna smack the shit out of him like right in yeah. front of my face. You know what I'm saying? But so I guess in my mind, and that's me, that's the way I think about it. So in my mind, I guess I thought that their relationship was a little bit beyond like just coworkers. Like they yeah, kinda like not, hold each other down type shit. Nah, that shit that shit that like I said, I was on T I podcast, he said it, he was like he was like, yeah, because he was asking tips about, like, how he can do the whole, you know what I mean? Like, as he's transcending in the media and shit, he was like, just do your thing. And then he was like, so how do y'all, do y'all, like, get up? He was like, nah. He was like, man, we talk when we get to work, and when work is over, we out. You know what I'm saying? I do my thing, they do their thing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, Envy, but Envy posted on his Instagram, like, he, you know, Envy emotional as hell. So, yeah, um, Envy super cause, emotional. Because <laughs> he was like, he was Gucci was like, I slap him, man, he's got them dog or some shit. Like, tell him <laughs> to bring his dog and shit like that. <laughs> so the nigga was like, he had a picture with him and his dog and shit, no longer as caption. He was like, Charlamagne <laughs> had told him about it, the interview beforehand and all that other shit, like before it posted or whatever. So I think, Char- you know, Charlamagne probably, like, as soon as the shit happened, I'm sure he went and told him, like, yo, you know what I mean? Gucci talking spicy and shit, X, Y, and Z. Um, but even in that interview, like I said, he he mentioned that he would, you know, get them niggas on the phone and shit. And he tried to kind of resolve it and squash it that way. But uh, Gucci won't work for, for none of that. So they just going to have to. It just don't seem like a lot to be mad about, though. Because, like, yeah, Envy ain't do shit. Like, Envy won't. Or ye I, so didn't I guess, do shit. All ye was saying was like, for my opinion. Yeah, that, I agree. That, all ye said is like, nah, that, that's not how it went down. Yeah, I think it's probably some backstory that. And, and we don't know. Because. Yeah, because uh, him saying that he banned the shit, and he said in, in the interview, he was like, he reached out. He said the label tried to reach out, and they said the Breakfast Club declined. He was like, why they decline? He was like, because uh, apparently you, Angelie, you didn't feel, um, you know, I guess you felt uncomfortable and disrespected by the last interview that y'all had, and she didn't want y'all up there. So, I, I, and he was like, they went back, the label went back and watched it. I was like, I don't see what, what the big deal was and shit like that, of course, because they're going to side with him, but. Um, and it's weird because he on Atlantic and ye fuck with, you know, Mike Kaiser and all them real tough, which is like the BP yeah. or the head of, of Atlantic. So, um, 
you know, I don't know. I guess it would have been it would have been a conflict of interest, I guess. But um, I but don't see, know, man. See, so you just got to the root right there. So basically, you need their platform, and you can't go on. And now you pissed off. Or you right. feel like you can't go on. Or you've been told that you can't go on. So, Because yeah. that's what I was trying to think. Because if this happened in 2016, Gucci just recently, like a month ago, that's when all this got riled back up. And that was around the time mm. Gucci album dropped. Or whatever the case may be. So no, now, he, Yeah, his album dropped on the 17th last week. Okay. So he had an album coming. And so he probably was trying to go mm-hmm. in and promote. And it's like, no, nah, you right. can't use my platform for that because I feel like you lied on me. You, you saw the video that every, uh, shout out to Instagram. Anytime I see something on Instagram, I was like, where there's like a question mark behind it. I was like, oh, I'm going to give it two hours. They're going to show receipts. I ain't even worried about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Instagram fucking FBI agents are the best. Anyway, you saw the video of Angela Yee and Gucci Mane. Oh, she was Man. talking freaky now. She but do you feel freaky. like it was flirting or it was regular lip service Angela mm, Yee? That shit was uh, satellite radio. You ain't finna tell a nigga, like, you know what they say about Asian girls. You know, we got deep pussies. Like, what? <laughs> like, so like, let me ask you this. You're not going to refer to your it. pussy of, like, to me. You let, know what I'm saying? But listen, about, like, the sexual say, innuendos. You would say... To and, and reverse the roles, if you would definitely say to an Asian bitch, "Hey, you know what they say about black guys," and not want to fuck that bitch. Uh, I mean, but the whole conversation was it was sexual in your windows going around. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't it, it wasn't just that. Like she got to that point by them niggas was talking about sex and shit, and then she was kind of like. And he was, and he was looking at, like, if you look at it, he was looking at it like, oh, you trying to fuck. And I she, saw like, him was, nigging. I saw a nigga being yeah, a nigga. Yeah, and she was got them, get, and she was I didn't get that. Nigging. I didn't I get did. that. I didn't I get that. that. I didn't get that. I get, like, she was involved in the conversation. She was definitely saying, what's up? Like, like, this is what's up with yeah, Asian girls, up? but yeah. not like, what's up with Gucci? And Gucci was extra fucking ugly then, like. I, I, I'm, I'm team Yee on this one. That sweater he had on was hard. I'm, I'm, I can't right. even remember the sweater, but I'm team Yee on this one. I'm like, talking about the, the Charlamagne interview. Oh, what sweater he have on? Oh, yeah, I do remember that. That, that, that was a good fire. sweater. That was a, that was a good sweater. That was hard. That was a good sweater. That was, that was. Now that I think about it, that really was. I'm team Yee on this one. Like. All dark skinned niggas with, with good hair is fucking nuts. I know several of them and they all ain't, they all a little off their rocker. <laughs> is Still that what it is? Yeah, Gucci got good hair. Good. Yeah, then you just see the. You don't be paying attention to details. Nigga, I'm like, not lusting over these niggas like you. I'm not looking yeah, at Gucci exactly hair and shit. Like, yeah, because you can you can lust over a nigga by looking at their hair and seeing if they got nigga hair or if they got fine like good hair. First of all, like, they. <laughs> I've never noticed Gucci's hair. Period. Okay. I haven't. Okay. <laughs> so he dark skin with good hair and purchase them niggas teeth. Is weird. All them niggas is weird. Gotcha. That- that's a tip from B Hill. Like I need to look at Gucci hair. It ain't it ain't never like stood out to me in no type of way. He always looked well groomed these days, but I ain't never paid attention to it. Is it the same hair he had when he was old Gucci? Mm-hmm. I think he always had that like that shit. Even his first like his first video with uh with fucking Jeezy <laughs> um, in them. That nigga had the goddamn curly fro and shit. I was like this nigga got a perm and shit. But that nigga just got like shout out my nigga DJ, my nigga DJ Shell. He got fucking he a dark skinned nigga with crazy ass good ass hair. Like, nuts. <laughs> hey, but shout out, out to nigga. niggas for admiring niggas' hair. That ain't even no shade. Like admiring niggas act like is not. You be you be trying to like I throw like, like extra gay spice. No, and shit you on feel like admiring extra not, gay. I'm not saying that's gay. Yeah. I just don't think like, admiring you, admiration is a wild word for noticing that a motherfucker got curly hair. Like my son has. You curly said hair. he like, has good hair. You. <laughs> You gave him, you said he has good hair. Yeah, like, he got a yeah, that, that curly ass hair. Is good not a praiseworthy word? Uh, nah, I'm just saying he got good hair. Like, it's like he got curly hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like no different than a nigga that got coarse hair. You know what I mean? But I, if a nigga got nappy ass fucking hair, I'm going to say that too. It's not like I'm admiring or fucking like. But when you, know you say I mean? nappy, you're nine times out of ten, you're saying it in a negative connotation where if you say good, good means good. Listen, I'm not trying to put shit on you. I'm just saying, like, when you ask niggas about shit, they be like, oh, I ain't pay attention. Like, da 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 da. I just think that it's dope that a nigga can look at another nigga hair and be like, oh, niggas with good ass hair. I've never paid attention to Gucci's hair. And. I pay attention to hair, but yeah. that's the problem. His hair better than his fucking old lady's hair. 
<laughs> she looks crazy. Like she looks like Keisha Kaor. She looks wild to me. <laughs> she looks like a uh, action figure superhero yeah, she type. Like, she be she be crazy. Like she used to be cute back in the day, but like I don't know. Like she got old fast as hell. <laughs> Keisha Kaor should be in her forties. Oh, that motherfucker! Yeah, she for sure because Gucci said he's thirty nine. About yeah. to be forty, so she definitely forty seven. I remember Gucci being with uh, what's the girl name? Judy the Booty, Jody the Body. What's that bitch name? Buffy the Body. Buffy the Body. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> K Slay stole her. <laughs> Buffy the K Slay. I ain't heard about K Slay in a minute. What the fuck K Slay up to? You keep it's more up in that community. Stunting, straight stunting magazines. <laughs> Shout out to K Slay, just because I ain't heard that name in a good little minute. That's my nigga. I still follow. I follow K Slay. Uh, damn. I can only imagine what K Slay Instagram looked like. Um, Gucci interview with uh Charlemagne is leadership. It was great. I enjoyed it. It was a great interview. Uh, I think that it is lit. Uh, cause I'm seeing that old Gucci may actually be Gucci. Instead oh, nah, of somebody still, who had a lobotomy. Um, oh, no, nah, it ain't old Gucci. It's, it's just Gucci. It's just regular old Gucci. That nigga's still nuts. He's still about all that dumb shit. Yeah. He's just sober. He just yeah. ain't on drugs and and, and ain't fat. <laughs> right. And probably could slap the shit out you for real. And, and goddamn, I, I think he's going to slap the shit out of Envy. I'm, I'm definitely. I'm Envy definitely, would I'm, cry 100%. Like, I, don't, I think Envy, <laughs> Envy a fight, though. Like, Envy ain't no, uh, ain't no sucker, though. I Envy give me no sucker suck all day. And he give me know. suck all day. He gonna grab his phone and call the police ASAP. No, no. Envy always so. give me sucker. Like if we talk about niggas, we could take away from the Breakfast Club. Envy would be my first one. Like I could. Envy would be my first one. Like Envy don't really have no place to me. Like it works with the three of them. Don't get it twisted. And and I'm not saying that Envy's not smart and does houses and has a career and all that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying from a strictly a personality wise, I could do without Envy. Personality wise, I could do without Envy. Because Envy either always whining or about to cry or saying some gay shit. What you yeah. think? I fuck with Envy. <laughs> That's my nigga. I, I fuck with Envy. Like, I've, I, I always fuck with Envy back to the damn when he made mixtapes and shit. So. If, Envy, Envy. if Envy was off the Breakfast Club, would you still listen? Uh yeah, but I probably still would. I still would follow him and you know what I mean. See what he got going on and shit. Cause I still think I mean he, Envy been a staple in the game for a minute. Like he was with Hot ninety seven. He did had the Envy MTV shit. Like he Envy all right. He he he, he can do it. I think he can stand alone if he needed to. As a personality, mm-hmm. hell no. Nah. Envy, I I definitely don't think Envy could hold it down as a personality. But strictly personality, that's all I'm talking about. I really don't think Envy could hold it down on a DJ Envy morning show. He asked, well, he asked, he asked a dumbass question like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, he asked stupid ass questions. Like he's, he never seemed like he's prepared. He never, I don't know, like Envy, I don't know, like from a personality wise. And I don't even know from a DJ standpoint, because I don't really know like D- Envy's, uh, DJing shit. I give oh, no, Envy props in a way. He loose on that DJ. He, he, he don't own the show. Yeah, but I mean, he can't. But honestly, I've I done never been heard parties with, with Envy Rock. That nigga rocks. Yeah, I've that never nigga, heard of him. That nigga's one of the best DJs in the world for a reason. When the last time you been to an Envy show? I don't know. That show was like five years ago. Mm. I don't know. He was at some club. He rocked that bitch, though. Well, I need to go see Envy be a DJ, but just like strictly from a personality standpoint, I'm cool. Um, let's go into Tank. So t- back to Angela Yee. <laughs> All roads lead to Angela Yee. Uh, Tank sat down with Angela Yee's lip service uh podcast, and they act so for you guys who don't know about Angela Yee's lip service podcast, they basically is her and three other thoughts, and they talking about sex all the time. Shout out to them for making this last like two hundred some odd episodes. Um, and uh, it's you. Do you listen? I used, I used to, to listen, but I it, it started getting redundant to me. Yeah, I stopped listening a while ago. If if it's somebody that I'm interested, but I ain't listened to it in mad long. Yeah, actually, I subscribe to it. Gotcha. As a matter of fact, I subscribe to it, but I've never really listened to it. Um, but 
Uh, she's coming to Atlanta soon too. I think like next week. But the tickets was fifty, and I'm not giving up fifty for that. Um, uh, but they tank. Uh, R&B singer Tank sat down and was asked if sucking dick made you gay. Yeah. And they said, you're, oh, like, all right, you're like, yeah, that's, you're like, that's the end of this segment. Yeah, <laughs> Let's like, move along. That's pretty much it. That's all we got. No more to see here. Oh, Tank they, oh, I, I definitely put Tank in that, uh, uh, oh, yeah. Jamie Foxx, Diddy, um, Eddie Murphy, uh, category. Like, they but like, like women. At least them niggas ain't, well, Puff, Puff done said it, but fucking, like Eddie and Jamie, like you just kind of heard stories, but this nigga done like he done talked about getting his ass ate and got them sucking dick now. Shit, right, damn fella. <laughs> yeah, he did talk about getting his ass ate. Yeah, and if man. you get your nigga. ass ate by a woman, is that gay though? That nigga gay. Is that? He just threw the woman in there, just you know, throw, <laughs> throw the scent off. That, that was the curveball. Yeah, that nigga getting his butt ate by a nigga. <laughs> I, the, I we talked about this on the show. The only part, like, if you're a man, and you like getting your ass ate. The only part I see like gay about that, if you're getting your ass ate by a woman, is the position that in which you have to be in, in order to get your ass ate. You either gonna have to lift your legs and spread your cheeks, or you gonna have to bend over and spread your cheeks. Either so one, it's it. just it. I'm not a man, but it seems uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm straight. Uh, I'm um, but um, they asked him if uh. Angela Yee said, so let's say a guy sucked dick one time and then she jumped in and said, no, let's say twice. Does that make him gay? Um, And Tank said that if he sucked dick once, right, then he's like, I'm not sure if I like it or not. Let me try it again. Then he says, you know what? Not for me. I don't like the taste. See what I'm saying? He said, doesn't mean that he's gay. just means that he sucked dick twice. The <laughs> and so all of this kind of went viral. And uh, he came back on his social media to say that basically people are homophobic. He said what he that said. That has nothing to do with homophobia. Sir. Exactly. So <laughs> we can just it's nothing. Move. You said that that shit, what you said is that the man sucked dick twice. <laughs> And he says he doesn't like it on the second go round that he's not gay. Get the fuck out of here. Like, if you go back, if you suck a dick the first time, <laughs> you're gay. Like, you know what the fuck a dick is. And you know, <laughs> you know, you know what, what I'm the saying? Fuck like, a you dick know what is. that entails, my nigga. Like, and you've, I'm pretty sure you've had head before. So, you know, that's a pretty intimate thing. Like, to do that, like, you have to be gay. Ain't no goddamn, like, it's nothing. There's no, and it's, and if you want to do that, shout out to you. Enjoy sucking dick. Right. But you're gay. And that's just, my just, thing. Like, he tried to equate yeah, homosexuality like, nah. to negativity. No, yeah, we're not nah. saying that. We're saying you tried to it's be, just yeah, gay. You tried to fucking do that shit. <laughs> right. It's not, you trying to flip the script. We see what you yeah, trying to do. Trying to throw that, I'm telling you, you trying to throw that sin off, man. He tried to do the Jedi mind trick like, oh, yeah. y'all saying some shit. No, we're not saying that you if know. you suck dick is bad. We're saying if you suck dick is gay. Yeah, that's what it and is. And you're a man, for yeah. sure. That's it. Yeah, listen. And enjoy yourself doing it, whatever you want to do. For and, you and, to and do even it a good say, job. for you to even say, so I go by the rule of twice, right? So I say, if you try something once, it's an experiment. If you try something twice, it's a lifestyle, right? So if you suck dick twice, yeah, you, you went back to dick. You suck dick. But, however, you know, you could, let, let's flip it. You could be a woman, right? And you could say, I am a heterosexual woman, and I like men. I just don't like sucking dick. And that's fine. And you and, and, and you you tried it twice. You said, look, I've tried this. It's just not really my thing. But you had to like men in the first place to even put a dick in your mouth. Correct. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So anatomically, that, <laughs> that's how that works. So men have penises. <laughs> you can I I give I give individuals. Me personally, I don't make the rules. I'm just saying the world according to Fresh is. I give so you, you do the make liberty. the rules. <laughs> the and world if, according to Fresh if, is if, your if rules. If you if you subscribe to the world according to me, then yes, I make the rules. But I doubt I make the rules to literally anybody. Gotcha. <laughs> But, you know what I'm saying, if you decide, like, hey, this guy looks like I would like his penis in my mouth. That's gay. 
You can be gay and just not like sucking dick. But the fact that you wanted a man's dick inside of your mouth. Especially being a man and knowing what a dick entails. Like, you know what a dick is. (laughs) You know what it do. You know what it do. You know what I mean? Like, nah, bro. You you like dick. Like, (laughs) that's fine. And it's okay. We're not saying you can't like dick. We're just saying call call a spade a spade, my guy. Call a dick a dick, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Call a dick a dick. If it's a dick, you you look at you you call a gay a gay. You you look (laughs) head on into a dick, and you say, "I want to put my mouth on that one eyed snake," and then motherfucker gonna spit that venom at you, and you know you know it. Well, I I I just think that is so funny because there are a lot of men who indulge in homosexual behavior, right? But they're also the same men who go out and beat gays up. They are the same men who are very adamant and has a very vehement uh, opinion on homosexuality and things like that. Be you, my nigga. And you don't even have to talk about it. For sure. You don't have to talk about it. You don't have to tell nobody about it. Besides the person that you with, I think that, you know, you should have disclosure if you're in a relationship or something like that. That's my opinion. I feel like if you doing anything like you're a partner should know so that they can be cool with it or not or whatever the case may be. But it 100 percent makes you gay. Has, has, has a has a nigga that you presume to be straight and I'm doing air quotes here ever offered you head fuck no no what would you do i don't know i pray <laughs> to god i never i'm never presented with that position i think it I happens a lot i think it happens a lot i have i have gay male friends and it happens more often than not but my whole thing about it i've only like, been tried i think one time and it was like and i found out at a later time okay. that i was like and it wasn't tried let me it was just a nigga like tried to like like hit on me type shit. It was weird. We was at the gym and like he was like, Excuse me, sir, do you have the time? And I was like And he said, Time for this dick And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I don't know, nigga. I ain't I say I ain't got my phone, I ain't got no watch, nigga. Like you don't got no watch on, you know what I'm saying? And he was like he had the wild like gay ass fucking tank top shit on and oh, shit. It was shit. just weird. And it was like the long tank that, top where it kind of showed the nipples a little bit. Yeah, like the mad like exactly G string what... top shit. Like it was like, like the it was fashion over top. Yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, nah, nigga. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I ain't think about. It. I'm like, why the fuck is nigga ask me what time it is? You know what I'm saying? Like, because I ain't have my phone and don't nobody have watches in 2019. You know, or this one 19 is probably like shit, 16, 15, some shit. I like definitely that. wear like, a watch, but go ahead. I mean, yeah, but. <laughs> You're not wearing a watch in the gym, or if I, no, I, ain't have, no, I didn't have a watch, a watch on, in the gym. right? So it's no reason to ask me the time. And then, and then it was a fucking clock shortly, like right around the corner. Oh. So then I was like, I told him all that. I was like, yeah, this nigga fucking gonna ask me where that shit. She was like, you know, that's a sign. I was like, what you mean a sign? Yeah. She was like, yeah, that's like a like like a Cold. Uh, icebreaker type shit. Yeah. And I was like, to ask a nigga what time it is, she was like, yeah. And I was like, holy shit! I told you time for this dick. That shit crazy. No, so like I read a thing. book. Uh, a long time ago, it could have been about ten years at this point in time, but it's called On the Down Low. I forget the author, but everybody read this book at that Zane Low. It wasn't Zane. Zane Low. Um, no, it wasn't oh, Zane. It was by this shit. guy. It's not um, Zane Low at all. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he he was basically it was kind of like his autobiography or whatever, and he was talking about how he was married and how he was basically a download man, and he was talking about all of these like signals, so it's things that could have been thrown at you like that time shit, and because you're not a gay man, you didn't pick up on it yeah, or a no bisexual like, man or whatever yeah. you didn't pick up on it, but it's ways niggas give like handshakes to let niggas know what's up if you identify is, that what it like is sonic shit. That's how no. the Masons do. Facts. Like, it is. It's just like that. Like, it's certain shit. So, like, the crazy thing, like, to me about, like, so you, like, you take a man, right? He got to do all these things to wine and dine a woman, right? Like, to get to some ass, even if that's just his goal, like, to get to some ass and shit. The crazy thing about gay men, and this is not to encompass all gay men, but based on conversations that I've had with gay men and things that I know about gay men, 
It's crazy because, like, with gay men, you cut out all that court and shit. It's just like, I niggas give you the handshake, niggas. you know what's up, and we we in the fucking gym, we in the fucking shower fucking like shit. We don't even know each other's name. It's like straight to the chase. Like, I feel like if men could do that with women, they would 100% win. Oh, yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. I mean, that's why niggas pay for sex. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's why prostitution is the True. oldest fucking, the oldest sport in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas, if I can... Nigga, that, that's why niggas who married, like, go and get pussy. You know what I'm saying? And pay for pussy. Like, it's no questions asked. Like, I ain't got to worry about you doing X, Y, and Z. Like, boom. You know what I'm saying? So, hell yeah, yeah. Absolutely. If niggas could do that shit and they had to wind and dine you and shit and save money, and goddamn, <laughs> like, if I could just, just give you, to if it. I can give you $40 and not have to take you to the movies and not have to take you to the fucking, to the fucking get something to eat and, and to the bar and all that shit. If I can give you $40 and get the same result that I'm going to get, hopefully, Niggas will definitely do that shit. Niggas will definitely pass, go straight, go pass, go, and got them and everything else and <laughs> go straight to the money. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like, that's why I see, like, oh, I see why y'all niggas out here, like, being gay. Like, it cut to the chase. Like, it is what it is. Like, <laughs> I see why y'all niggas out here being gay. That was wild. <laughs> That was a hot take, but not like that. But I see, like, <laughs> y'all cut out the middleman. I'm just saying shout out to gay niggas because you cut out, out the middleman. Middle is wild, too. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just nuts today. like you, get, you get straight to it. Like, like it be so bad that, like, they don't even be knowing each other's names and shit. Like, they run into niggas that they done you fuck. You don't know my name. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's crazy so i'm just like i get it like y'all niggas ain't gotta do all that extra shit y'all just go get right to it y'all don't give a fuck y'all don't give about y'all don't care about names y'all don't care about where they grew up not favorite colors no shit your nigga just gone for 20 minutes in the bathroom and he just fucked and just came back straight to the table with you that's wicked that's wild that's wicked. that is wild oh um, but yeah so uh Tank, boo, boo, boo. You gay, sir? It's okay. Yeah. You're bisexual. You can still like women. It's it's totally fine. And there's nothing negative about being homosexual. It, it we just gonna call the spade a spade. Literally, shit. Call it gay, gay. <laughs> uh, tank, sucking dick twice, and it's just sucking dick twice. <laughs> it's literally. <laughs> shit. Wow. I don't know if it's lit or shit. That's just, I don't know. It's just it's some shit that's lit. <laughs> Uh, if you yeah, get too lit, that. you might end up with some shit that's on your disgusting. dick. Um, <laughs> fleet. I learned what fleeting was. Uh, is, I don't know. I don't want to know. No, we got to educate you. <laughs> I don't want to know. If your you name. fucking get okay, some spackle educational on your dick. moment. If, if, if you are a gay man and I'm messing this up, my gay guy friends have told me about this. And shout out to Kid Fury because I learned about this from him as well. Um, fleeting. So, we all have it so easy as far as sex compared to, like, bottom gay men. So, if you're going to have your bottom, a bottom means typically that you're the receiver. Like, they can't eat and shit. Because Mm. if you enter the (laughs) gluteus maximus hole, uh, then if you got too much on your stomach, you can basically, like, shit on the dick you know what i'm saying so they have to do like a butt douche jesus christ yeah it's hard being a gay man it's hard we need to get them more props they go through a lot (laughs) to make sure that they're ready to have sex with some trash ass nigga that ain't gonna even know their name Listen. And you a wild nigga if you not like if you just running up on a nigga like and you know what I mean like you ain't even asking you did you douche like that's a <laughs> wild <you> conversation <laughs> yeah, damn you clean your ass out nigga I'm about to go been there. what the fuck <laughs> knock knock who's there fleet did you fleet nigga like so the the product is called fleeting or fleet mm, mm, and it's mm. a butt douche <laughs> so the more you know the more you grow. I was, nah, I ain't growing. <laughs> I ain't growing. <laughs> I gotta deal without that. That's crazy. Uh, so speaking of, of sex, uh, so after after less than a year, congratulations, I guess, to Nicki Minaj. She has gotten married uh, to Kenneth Petty. 
Uh, her name is now Onika Mirage Petty. She hyphenated her name, uh, which is very interesting as well because Safari got married like two weeks ago mm. uh, to Erica Mena. Um, I always uh, like to wish people the best. Uh, I give Nicki Minaj two years, maybe. I give Safari probably two years as well. Uh, mm. with that, uh, I don't know because I feel like Erica, Mena, and Safari are both like, um, attention seekers. So I feel like they'll do whatever they can to kind of stay into the spotlight. But the thing that we talked about, uh, eons of podcasts ago was the fact that this guy is a level, is a level two sex offender. And he's a registered sex offender. Um, if you are a level two or level three, level two is a moderate sex. Of, uh, you have moderate risk. A, le- a level three is high risk. Um, and you must for level twos and threes, you remain on the sex offender registry forever. Mm. Like, so you're never coming off a uh, backstory to those who may not know. I don't know how you wouldn't know, but basically, um, he was uh, convicted and served time for a uh, rape of he of a girlfriend that he had um, of that time. But he threatened her. The stories go allegedly that he threatened her with a knife and made her have sex. One of the misconceptions is that individuals feel that if you're in a relationship with someone or you're married, that you cannot be raped. Any time in which you say no and someone proceeds, that's rape. I don't care what your relationship is with that person. If they force themselves upon you, Um, and take whatever that is considered rape. What was very interesting is someone said, how the fuck she going to marry somebody who can't even take her kids to school? That's a mean jump. That's wicked. Uh, Nikki was with Safari for a very long time. She was with McMill like two and a half years, but she's dated this guy and she's been using him as a prop for, you know, um, it's been less than a year that they've been around. So I think it's just very interesting. Um, I know that Nikki, um, is the type of person that would definitely tell you before an interview, don't talk about this. Don't talk about that. I'm not about to deal with it. She hasn't talked about several things that has gone on that normal celebrities, not of her status has went through. You know, that her brother is in jail for child molestation for raping a 11 year old or something like that. Then you choose to deal with a pedophile. Um, I know that, you know, you have mentioned on this podcast be that, you know, you, you did your thing as far as like street life and shit. I grew up in street life, but I've never been attracted to criminals or drug dealers or anyone like that. I think my view of the streets and growing up, growing up in it is that I wanted to be as far away from it as possible. Is there a crime in which you're just like, or previous would be like, you know, I can't date you. If you have this type of crime, rapist, all that shit. I mean, well, female rapists. I mean, yeah, women can do that. I shit. mean, they I mean, can. Women, yeah, they shit. can I for mean, sure. Rape, rape a child, so yeah, absolutely. But like, you, can you rape know, a sexual. Man. Yeah, you can rape a man too, for sure. Yeah. Um, ass tank. Um, <laughs> low blow, low hanging fruit. Um, blow, yo, bro. Baboon ching. Go ahead. You gotta get your. <laughs> did you say low, bro? I had you? ice in my mouth. I had took a <laughs> sip of low, water. Getting freaky over there. Low um, blow. You said low blow. I was okay. like, Baboon Ching. You said low bro. But, uh, whatever. Same. Okay. What was the question? Same. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a crime in which you yeah, would be I mean, like, like, I yeah. wouldn't date someone? Yeah, I mean, like, recent murder and shit. I ain't fucking uh, recent, gonna, You know what I mean? Like, if you murder. murdered somebody, like, a couple years ago, <laughs> yeah, I can't fuck with that. What's the cutoff for murder? Like, 10 years ago, you good? Two yeah, years ago, you not. it depends on not. what the type of murder was. Like, if you was self What's the then type we of murder? Okay, yeah, we rocking. You. But if you just, like, you know what I mean, going out smoking niggas and shit, nah, I can't fuck with that. Um, yeah, I mean, what about fraud? Like, what about fraud? Like, identity fraud, scamming and shit like that? I'm all right with that. I ain't, I mean. Okay. I ain't really, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't. Because, like, you might just get caught up doing some shit, you know what I mean? Like, you know, everybody trying to eat, you know what I mean? Like, hustling and shit, like, white-collar crime, shit like that. Nah, I'm I'm, I'm cool. But, like, 
that 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 blue collar shit when you got them smoking niggas and doing child molestation and rape and shit like that or doing acts against like old people and shit like that's kind of like more morals you know what i mean like it's just kind of like the moral compass you know what i mean for me like if if your morals is wild i can't fuck with that but white collar crimes and shit and and you know victimless crimes so to say um yeah i'm cool we can roll i ain't really tripping off that my cutoff is one how recent Mm -hmm. because even if you want some shit like the way i rock like even if you want some shit off some failure to appear you're a grown-ass person why did you failure to appear had to do 30 days like that just goes to your responsibility things to me like i'm just not with it like of course all of those things that you mentioned but in addition to the things that you mentioned, it's anything that would impact you from getting a job or being great in your future. I can't fuck with it right. at all. I don't care if it was 10 years ago. Like you was doing that shit and you got to check this box and you're unable to get a job. I can't fuck with it. I just can't fuck with it. I've never been into criminals. Like, like never. Like I understand like hustling and shit like that. Um, and that's all good. But you know, you either need to be smarter and not get caught. <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying? Like I it's it's just not something I, I, I rock with. You know what I'm saying? Where you're avidly doing crime um in in a in a way that impacts like your your future. And what it sounds like, like this shit happened to this guy probably like twenty years ago. You know what I'm saying? I think it's like Real talk, like, 96, 97 or something like that. But he's still literally on the sex offender registry. Because I look, because somebody said something to me. I was like, let me look and see if that nigga name come up. Come up, picture, everything, his information, what he did, where he live at, his picture, like, all that shit, like, on the sex offenders list. So... I think that I do want to give like a shout out to Nicki Minaj for being able to use her fame and celebrity to kind of navigate these waters where it really has not impacted her. But it's kind of like too, like of all the niggas, like this nigga was like kind of fresh out of jail when you started fucking with him. So it's just a very interesting, it's just a very interesting, um, the hats dynamic. they had was trash. Like the Mr. and Mrs. Whatever, them hats was garbage as fuck. Yeah, that was SD as fuck. They ain't had no fucking Fendi shits. Like, <laughs> Fendi prints on. Uh, them shits the definitely came from SD or the middle of the mall. Like, yeah, like, you can pick them shits up at the, like a true truck stop. At like, Lids. Yeah, y'all could have y'all could have did better than that. Uh, so it's like they're officially married. They will probably have like a ceremony or some shit uh, later, far away from a school zone. Hmm. Um, so <laughs> shout out to Mister and Mrs. Petty. I do feel like Petty is the perfect last name for Nicki Minaj. Uh, so shout out to living your dream, sis. Uh, Nicki Minaj getting married is it lit or shit? Um, it's lit. Lit, 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 lit. All right, I'm going with lit because I feel like it's going to make for some good content. I just don't feel like she makes smart decisions in the personal parts of her life. And then, hold on, like, before I get off that subject, it was somebody on my Instagram that was literally fucking with a dude for like a month and posted this nigga everywhere. And then it was just like, oh, like, we not together no more. Don't ask. Don't be in our business. <laughs> okay. Bitch, you put that shit out there. And right outside of that, I saw, like, the Summer Walker London on the track shit. I was like, hey, yo, that lasted as long as a lunch break. Like, I just don't get why people are so apt to post somebody after, like, a millisecond. Like no one work in the in the future though, cause like that nigga did her whole fucking album. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, the but as the producer, joint. you ain't got to be around. That's just the service. Yeah, I don't I know, really have to I'm see saying, you like, no more. It's just weird. Like you know what I mean? Like, cause future music and and you know what I mean? Like I don't know. Interesting. That's that was that was wild. I, I you know my 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 advice to individuals, and I feel like only reason I'm giving this advice because I feel like it helps me tremendously. Like, keep your personal business personal, because once you put it out there, then you can't be mad at motherfuckers for asking follow-up questions or asking, yo, so what's going on with such and such? Or, you know what I'm saying? Then you got to you gotta give answers and shit. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to let people know what you have going on in order for it to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to post everybody that you go out with. Like, you don't have to introduce everybody to your friends. Like, you don't have to do none of that shit. Once they get to a place, definitely before you post them, like, on your Instagram and shit that's not, like, in a group photo, like, they should at least be, like, you should be in, like, in a whole-ass vetted-ass relationship. But if you decide to go against my advice, that's cool. Just don't be mad when niggas is asking questions about the nigga. Like, yeah, what's up with homeboy you was posting the other day? Oh, he ain't shit. We ain't together. Fuck him. Da, 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 da. Now it's fuck him. Get it together. Get it together, ladies. Last but not least, uh, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this particular story. So, uh, Lisa Ray was on, um, Uncensored and she blames, a uh, part of her marriage crumbling to Michael Missick, who was the, what was he? The uh, Prince Emperor of Turks and Caicos, whatever he Prime was. Minister, Prime think. Minister of Turks. Um, that she blames Dwayne Martin uh, from all of us and other movies, House Party and other shit that he was on. Um, uh, She's blaming him for her crumbling marriage. Now, her and the um, prime minister of Turks were married from 2016, and then it all exploded uh, in 2018 when rumors of infidelity and corruption and all that happened. And Lisa Ray uh, was on Uncensored on TV One, and she said, me and, me and Dwayne do not fuck with each other at all. She said, I don't fuck with him. Fuck him. Fuck him. She says that after she introduced her friend Dwayne Martin to her husband, they kept, they became closer than her and her husband. And Lisa Ray says that Dwayne Martin, who was married to Tisha Campbell up until like the last six months, um, he introduced her husband to all of these women and some of the women were known associates. And that's where like the infidelity uh, came about um to me this is a question of loyalties now i feel like we probably come from a different place uh, b- uh male female me- venus mars on this situation what do you think about this situation as a whole and do you feel like Dwayne martin deserves to not be fucked with anymore um i mean if if you don't feel like you should fuck with somebody, I'm, you know, don't let me be the one to, you know what I mean? Make the, the, <laughs> right, the right, stance right. like, but, um, I guess I don't know. I mean, like, was he like, I know she said, from what I heard, she, he was instrumental in like introducing her to him, to women and shit like that. Like, like, I don't know. I mean, if he's introducing them, it's still up to the, to the husband. Like motherfuckers can introduce me to a million motherfuckers, but it's up to me to, to commit any, acts against my marriage you know what i'm saying like right if we out and about like Dwayne martin is a fucking you know he's he's a fucking star in terms of and you know especially yeah. black hollywood so yeah yeah and if you out partying and different you know people gonna come up to him all the time and he knows i'm sure you know in black hollywood he know a million fucking people the same with lisa ray so i mean just that's just even if lisa introduced him to you know different women or whatever you know casually and he ended up you know doing whatever on the back end like yeah, like that shit is that's that I think the act is the onus is on the fucking husband. You know what I'm saying? This he's still a married man. You know what I'm saying? So like him doing whatever he doing, that shit is against his vows and his his bond that he had with his wife. So I think the the the, the greater duty is on the husband to act accordingly. You know what I mean? Like as far as her not fucking with Dwayne, you know if he's if he's turning her on and shit like that and turning dude on with the intent of him like fucking yeah. bitches and yeah that's a little different but if he's yeah. just like I mean that's the vibe casually, I got from it yeah. if he that he was like casually, yeah he was mm-hmm. the connect you know what I'm saying like oh this bitch like you or here goes some bitches or yeah. you know whatever. I mean he the prime minister of fucking Turks and Caicos like what bitch wouldn't you know what I'm saying like everybody's trying to get flown to Turks and Caicos real quick you know what I'm saying so <laughs> he's just in the spot you know what I'm saying so like. Oh, so a man bad. is only as faithful as his options is is what I heard from that. Yeah, that's what Chris Rock said. And so for me, um, I feel like if Dwayne Martin 
actively facilitated hookups. First of all, let me rewind. It's on the husband. Can't nobody make you do shit you don't want to do. So he out. We already know he out. So he out. As far as Dwayne Martin is concerned, 100%. If you introducing the person that I'm with to other motherfuckers as the facilitator of a hookup or it's like, yo, you know, such and such trying to fuck with you or whatever the case may be. I'm not fucking with you no more. You disloyal. I can't fuck with you no more. Like, I'm 100% with her if it went down the way that she's right. saying that it went down. Like, yeah, you get rid of that nigga, but you get rid of that other nigga too because he ain't loyal. Like, I've been in situations where, you know what I'm saying, my friends have been fucking with trash-ass motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? And I've been cool with trash motherfuckers only on the strength of my friend. You know what I mean? But I have i didn't necessarily go and tell my friend, like, hey, this is what's going on. But I also said, like, look, I ain't in this shit. Only because... My friend always dates trash. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know who you fucking with is trash. You know what I'm saying? So, my thing is, I'm going to advocate behind the scenes. I'm not going to be with you. I'm not going to do none of these things. But if my if it were a different situation and this guy is kind of leading my friend on, I'm definitely going to tell my friend, we kind of had this conversation when we were talking about the letter with the mom and the dad and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Like depending on your personality and who you are, I'll definitely tell you once, but I'm not about to tell you twice. And that's just what it is. So I think that it was kind of fucked up. If the shit went, how Lisa Ray say that it went, you, my friend, you supposed to be having my back. You know what I'm saying? That's like me and you like, your wife hit me saying, hey, I'm coming to Atlanta. Like, I'm going to the housing shit. Like, she down here and I'm like, yo, like, homeboy trying to holler. Then you should definitely be like, I'm not fucking with Fresh no more. Like, what type of fuck shit is that? Yeah. Like, yeah, that's some crazy shit. Yeah, shit. That's lame. yeah, that's lame as fuck. So, you know, I think that, you know, I, based on Tisha Campbell and, and Lisa Ray, Dwayne Martin might not be the best dude. So, um, is this little shit, man? It's kind of fucked up. Uh, I guess it's shit. Yeah, I think it's shit because you know people just got had loyalty to the, to their friends, whoever they call friends. Now I get it. Associates are totally different. <laughs> People you just know is totally different. But if it's people you call your friends, like you should have some type of loyalty to that. Uh, you ready to give some advice, my man? Yeah, let's do it. All right. We're about to get into Ain't Shit in Two Cents. Ain't Shit in Two Cents is our listener letter segment where we give advice to listeners who clearly don't care about getting advice from someone who drinks a lot of wine and my sober gopher guy over here. Sober as a gopher. <laughs> Uh, our letter today is from Anonymous. And I want to know, I want to know your, your name, name, your name, your name, your, your name. name. Why you Why gotta, you gotta be? be anonymous? Ooh, ooh, ooh. She says, my sister and I was having a hypothetical conversation about who was more suitable to take care of our mom as she needed care at old age. My sister says I should take care of her because she has two kids and a husband. She says, I am single, but my job is very demanding and forces me to travel. She says I should be willing to find a less demanding job and take care of my mom because I will have more bandwidth than her. My sister is a stay at home mom. Now, this this conversation is definitely hypothetical because, of course, we would do anything that we needed to do for our mom in real life. But based on the facts presented, what environment do y'all think will be more suitable? My sisters or mine, who should feel more obligated to take on the responsibilities of an aging parent? Um, that is a, that's a tough one. Um, Shit. The single, the single, it's it's kind of like six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. You know what I mean? Um, because I think you know, especially because she said she was um, a stay at home mom, which is a job in itself. Because my yeah. wife is a stay at home mother, and shout out to fucking her because that shit, she's better than I am. So <laughs> it's an incredible task that you got to do. Um, you're never really off, but um, so 
coupled that, then uh, for the all for the lack of a better term, she would be like a third child. Um, so that would yeah. be kind of difficult, you know what I mean? But if she has capacity to keep her in the house and shit like that, um, you know, she might have a bigger house. It depends on that. You got to look at living arrangements and shit. Like how are y'all planning on, you know, divvying up that, like where she going to live Is she going to live in a nursing home. She going to live with the single sister, uh, uh, depending also, you know, who's more financially stable, I think too, you know what I mean? Like that, that definitely has, um, some stake in the game in terms of, you know, making decisions for the long term, uh, who can kind of sustain that financially, um, you know, more independently than the other. Cause obviously whoever lives, whoever that person is living with, yeah, the, you know, the other, uh, sibling will probably help contribute, but at yeah. the same time, like on a day to day basis, it's still going to be, you know, the brunt is going to be on that, the one that she's living with. Um, yeah. so all that ambiguity <laughs> that I just <laughs> said, um, <laughs> Abigurity. I really don't know, man. It's kind of hard. Like, I don't know. That's, uh, um, I guess maybe the single kid, I guess it just depends on the finances, you know what I mean? And then yeah. like where she lives and like, if y'all all live in the same area, you know what I mean? Like if you have, um, you know, if you live closer to her, then it wouldn't be as, you know, less stress to move her and get her in the, in the best frame, you know, as far as living wise. Um, I don't know, man. That's a yeah. tough one. I just, I guess because it's not enough information. I don't really right. know. Right. It's just super high level. Yeah, super high level. But um, I guess, I mean, just from the high level stance, I guess maybe the single person. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not really no help on this one. Cause it's like, <laughs> it's kind of. Yeah, this was just an interesting one. I, I I pulled out. I read that. I was like, huh. I don't know, but you know, I'm the I'm the oldest of four, and uh, being an the oldest child you all always assume that you have responsibility to do majority of things right um but i feel like see to me i kind of feel like the stay-at-home mom with the two kids and the husband has like a more stable environment um and that the mom should be there because you ain't moving and shaking as much you know what I'm saying? And I would definitely have to contribute or, you know, I know, I know individuals who have like a six month, six month thing with their siblings. Like they move the parent so that, you know, the parent gets to go to these different places and stay with like the different siblings and things like that. It would have to be at least divided up like that way. I already, I already told my mom, I was just like, look, mom, like if you get old, well, you're going to get old, but if you get old to the point where, you know, you need care, like, and shit like that, like I got you, but I'm also bringing in like a nurse or a CNA or something like that, like to facilitate <laughs> me taking care of you because my most dreaded thing is changing an adult diaper. For sure. That is, and uh, rest in peace, like, to my grandmother, towards the end of her day, she got, she was sick very rapidly. And my mom had to go to Mississippi because she moved back to Mississippi uh, probably about six years or so before she passed away, because that's where she's from. But she had been in D.C., you know, 50 plus years prior to that. Um but, you know, I was like, look, mom, like, I got to hire somebody. My mom had to, like, change diapers for, like, my grandma and, like, doing all of that. And that's, like, a big thing. And seeing, like, your parent deteriorate, like, I, I you know, I always, my heart always gets heavy when I talk about this and talking about, like, my grandmother and things like that, because that, that was, like, my second mom. But I've been blessed in the fact that my grandfather has passed, my dad has passed, and my grandmother has passed, but I've never had to deal with, like, the immediate impacts of that, like, taking care of them while they're, like, on, like, their deathbed and changing them and like seeing that deterioration happen. My mom had to deal with all of those things. So shout out to her for just being strong. Um, but going back to like your question, me personally being a single person, I'm definitely going with like your sister. 
she ain't doing shit. Like when I say she ain't doing shit, I mean she ain't, she don't have to travel all the time. She don't have like a she bunch might, of iron in her kids and hey, you and all that shit. Like travel sports, like kids. I'm telling you, like that. Shit, I mean, she could. That shit ain't no joke. That shit, you got to go to school. Like especially if you're an active, good parent, you got to be in them schools. You got to pick them niggas up from school. You got to do homework. That shit is a job. But boy. I, like most of the parents that I know, like they are pretty stable in the fact that like. Oh yeah, we're staying in this particular place until my child gets out of middle school or uh, until my child gets out of high school. Like they think a lot about their kids before they make like major moves. If you're a single person like myself, you might just go to where the opportunity is. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's all I'm saying. I just feel like, um, if you're a good parent, you're more methodical in the way that you move. So that to me, that just basically seems that equates to stability to me Yeah. versus me being single. I'm out here trying to, you know what I'm saying? Become unsingle or shuck a job. Then I'm traveling for work and, and, and I'm trying to figure out my life so I can have a life. Um, and either like, like she said, she said in this letter, like we'll do whatever we can. We, we, could for our mom so that's not a question this is more like hypothetical and shit but just based on the high level information i'm thinking i'm I'm thinking the more stable family to me and b's thinking the more single family or uh, a single person or whatever um but it's a good conversation and we we all need to think about that like eventually like our parents are going to get so old real, reality of getting old you just got to deal with your parents mortality and shit and that shit sucks that super sucks. That sure. super stuff. Uh, oh, uh, by the way, let's. Um, I'm gonna shout out old girl that um hit the YouTube comment. I forgot her name, but shout out to her for listening and, and uh, sending feedback. Uh, yeah. you know what I'm talking about. I Mona, Mona, Mona. Shout out to Mona. Appreciate your love and uh, support for uh, the duration of however long you've been listening and continue to listen. And uh, we appreciate the comments and the feedback. And uh, and we're impacting yeah, lives for sure. Y'all don't let us impact y'all life. <laughs> We're winging it. Call it K a K. <laughs> Call it K a K. But anonymous, let us know what you think about our thoughts. Because again, all of this is hypothetical, so we don't know. I just thought that this letter was very interesting um, concept. So uh, shout out to you and, and, and shout out uh, to listening. And if any. Of you great fans out there who keep us going, want any advice from Dr. Bill with the H is silent or Dr. Fresh, please write into the ancient show at gmail.com and your letter may get read on the show. Yeah, you ready to wrap yeah. up with some free smoke, free smoke? Let's do it. Free smoke is where we talk about any issue that we want, any hot button personal topics. It can be anything from politics to Betty. It's whatever we want in this segment. So um this segment comes about uh I went to a game night and uh there was this game in which we it was basically called like code switching. That's what they called the game. But it, it was basically a play on who you turn into like when you at work and shit. So basically the game that we played was related to movies. And you basically described a movie in a very professional kind of uh non-traditional way of the, the movie synopsis. Uh What me and B are going to do, I thought it would be fun if me and B played this game but with music and what we're going to do is give you and we both have six so it's the person who has the highest score we're go we're gonna play a game we haven't played a game on here in a very long time um i thought it would be time to play a game we've talked about so many police shootings and racism and all that let's lighten the mood so um i'm gonna go first b right. uh i'll go first and so here's the synopsis is hip hop the year is 1992 all right that was like nine okay <laughs> okay but you they're all popular songs i got you uh a young man wakes up and immediately praises the lord for the lack of dog barks and harassment from the police oh, that's even cute. received <laughs> he even received a call from his crush from whom he had intercourse with later that day what was the song who was the artist Today was a good day, Ice Cube. 
Hey, see, it's easy. B has one point. I want to say that was was that Gorilla in the Mist? Uh, no, what was that? Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what album that was. That was what America's Most Wanted, maybe. I want to say America's Most Wanted. Yeah, I think I that do. was America's Most Wanted. Yeah. I do. Today was a good day by Q. Let me see. Uh, let's see what album was that? The Predator. Oh, okay. Yep. The Predator. That's, sure That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you have one point. Go. Uh, the year was 2006. It's hip-hop. Okay. Um, Mine is a little different, so I'm giving you, like, clues, but we'll fit, fuck it. We'll just, for the sake of fun, <laughs> we'll just okay. have, have a good time. Um, In order to do this, one must toot that thing and make it roll. Pop, lock, and drop it? Yeah. That was easy as fuck. You can't use toot that. That I was know, a could, giveaway. Was that was shit. a like, good way. That was the first one that I just, like, it came in my mind, and then I was like, <laughs> I couldn't think of that. I was fucking in the middle of dinner, so I was trying to damn, do the shit and sing Pop, the lock, and, and drop it. Yeah, like, so one point to you. All right, one and one. All I'll right. Go again. All right. You want to uh, go next, or you want me to go? Yeah, I'll go next. Okay. Uh, the year is 2007, and it's the genre is hip hop. Uh, one of the finest women in the world will have you so hot in the club that it'll make you take your shoes off. Okay, what's the year? 2007. One of the finest women in the club is so fine she will make you take your shoes off. Mm -hmm. Damn. 2007. Hip-hop. Hip-hop? Fuck. Make you take your shoes off. Fuck. All right. And what is hey, it? Hey, baby. Hey, baby. How how that verse go? How that part go? So hot up in the club and make my take my shoes off. I mean, <laughs> the, yeah. I think that's how that shit go. <laughs> I know he said that shit in the rock. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Shout out to Hurricane Chris. For sure. Hurricane All Chris. Right. That's my nigga. The score is still one one. All right. Got one. 1995 R&B. A young lady explains that even though her lover is cheating on her constantly, she is constantly on his mind. And even though this goes on very frequently, she still feels like she has him majority of the time. Oh, Mocha stuff. See? <laughs> What's the song? He's mine. Uh, yeah. I got him all the time. I guess he's mine. I <laughs> yeah. Know, I don't it's know called He's wrong. Mine. It's called yeah. He's Mine. You're right. All right. The score is 2-1. All right. Um, all right. In 1998, genre is R&B. Okay. Uh, this, little white, this little white fella has wings and flies around shooting arrow, and he's no not to lie. Cupid. Right, 112. Yeah. We out Great here. Song. Hey. Finally, he came. Jesus Christ. Uh, hold on, it's going two and two. How are you gonna play it's me? It's two. Nah, it's two one. No, I got the first one. And you missed Toot Halle Berry. You missed. I mean, you missed. Um, a Bay Bay. Oh, so wait, hold on. Let's talk about the score. So, I was only given scores for like it was like you can only get a maximum of six. Are you getting a score when? Well, are you getting a point when I get it wrong? We can play it that way. Yeah, nah, I'm getting a point when I get it right, and you only got one right. You only got two right. Right, so I had two, and I got three. No, you only got two right. I only went twice. Today oh, yeah, was a right. good day. I'm about, to, I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to. Get it. <laughs> That's all it was. I forgot. I mean, one out of turn. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me go then. All right. Um, a former promiscuous fella decides he wants to settle down and tells all his chicks via text. That he's getting married. Meanwhile, confidant is saying you need to reevaluate this decision. It's hip hop, 2007. Uh -huh. Said it again. Give me the. Uh, give a, me a promiscuous a, a promiscuous fella decides he wants to settle down and his, and informs all of his chicks via text that he's getting married. Meanwhile, his confidant tells him he needs to reevaluate his life altering decision. Mm. Two thousand seven hip hop. Damn. Sending these bitches Texas. Hey, when when Send when all I, Texas, all my exes like George Strait. That's um, that's Drake. That was a good guess, but that's wrong, and that's not two thousand seven. Think that's about the year. Not two thousand seven. Damn. When uh -huh. I tell you, you're gonna be mad as hell. 
Yeah. You'll be mad you got this wrong if you get it wrong. Cold nigga to text all your bitches that you ain't fucking with them. <laughs> right. I don't know. I give up. All right. International Players Anthem. Ah, I ain't <laughs> Don't do that it. Good. Reconsider. <laughs> that was good. All right. That was good. All right. Score still 2-2. Two, two. 2019. Go. This is a new one. A new okay. one. Good. It's R&B. All right. And a little baby has a bag and a Birkin. <laughs> she doesn't have a 9-to-5, but she puts that work in. That's good. Shug. I, I had to sing the song in my head. It's Shug? Mm, but, Ho, hold on. Give it to me again. Little baby got a Birkin. A little baby has a bag and it's Birkin. She doesn't have a 9-to-5, but she's working. I know the song. Well, tell me the song. Oh, um, no guidance. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey. Uh. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, the score is three to two. Fresh is now in the lead. Got one for you. Oh, joint. But because it's so old, I feel like you should get it. You may not have even been born yet. Oh, uh, so the is pop R and B. Mm. 19, 1983. So it's Mike. <laughs> After a beauty queen advises a gentleman that she, that she, right, that he Billie, impregnated her. <laughs> let me, let me at least let the people play at home. <laughs> Guys, let me finish so the people can play at home. After a beauty queen advises a gentleman that he impregnated her. The gentleman tells her that they did not have sexual intercourse, therefore he could not be this child's father. Yeah, it's Billy. Billy Jean by Michael Jackson. All right, it's three and three. Go. All right. Uh, years two thousand two. It's hip hop. All right. Uh, this fella needs Nike Airs, a mean bucket, a few a few dollar bills, something to a, fuck with, a couple chicks, <laughs> and then he's ready to go. Say that line again. I know it's Hove. I'm just trying to figure out which Hove it is. Uh, he needs some Nike Airs, yeah. a bucket, a couple bucks, a couple hoes, <laughs> and he's ready to go. Oh, my God, man. I'm singing the song in my head. I just need to get to the chorus. Ah! Thinking while recording is not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Me, this is your game. Couple of ducats, <laughs> and I'll be on my way. Come on, man! No, no, I can't do. That. I, I'm singing the song in my head. Uh-uh. I know the whole song, uh-uh. but for up. the sake of y'all not listening to me, think for. For five more minutes. What's the name of the song? Uh, no, no, say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. It's um, I'm a hustler. No. Nope. What is it? Uh, you have so, you have forfeited, ma'am. You have fucking expired your I time. Did. I did. It is all I need of Blueprint. All I need. Oh, yeah. Couple chicks by my Who's side. I, let's, let's ride. ride. Uh, I'll throw you off with the damn type shit. Yeah. Damn. I'm so mad at myself for that. Alright, so the score's still 3-3. Three, three. Alright, here go one for you. So I only how missed many you got one, left? I only I got I had six. So something that the addition ain't right. Yeah. Alright. So you missed two. So you got three and I got one more left. So that makes sense. All yeah. Right. But I should have more I've only missed one. So I should have more points than three. I should I've, have four. Uh no. You yeah, you no. How many you, you got, got today was a good day. Mm-hmm. You got Moke and Steph, and you got Billie Jean. That's three. You didn't get players at them. Right. So, the, so you have three. One. All right. And so I you have got two three. more to go. Yeah. All right. All right. So, right. so hip hop, 2011. While in his feelings, a young man contacts his former conquest and advises her that the gentleman that she is entertaining is subpar and she needs to up her standards. Marvin Drew. Uh Damn it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can't that's stop right. me, bro. You know, that's you right. Only support. on International Players I Anthem. And I'm upset about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Whatever. I'm upset about that whole shit. Yeah, you should be. 
Shit. Um, All right. So it's four to three. So I, I got to get this. No, you definitely not going to get that. You might get this one. I don't know. Let's don't see. be trying to stop me. You need I'm to not... read it how you wrote it. In 1990, it's 1997. It's hip hop. Okay. It's some niggas that are real from the front to back. And sometimes the sun doesn't last too long. But while we'll, while, but while we're here, we might as well enjoy it, the sun together. Say that, say that again. And what year is it? 97. Okay, give it to me. There's some niggas it. that's real from front to back. And sometimes the sun doesn't last too long. But while we're here, we might as well enjoy it together. Victory. Good job. Ah. All right. So, in order for me to win this or to tie with you, I need you to get this one wrong. So, this is the last one. This is like sudden death. If you get this, you win the game. If not, we tie and we need to decide what a tiebreaker is. All right. So it is pop R&B. And I put pop and R&B only for you. I'll show you. (laughs) It's 2008. And while out at the club, after a breakup, a young lady's former boyfriend gets upset because she's receiving male attention. She advises him to propose nuptials if he would like to keep her. Hmm. Oh, does that put a ring on it? Is it? <laughs> uh, say it again. While out at the club during the breakup, a young lady's former boyfriend gets upset because she's receiving male attention. She advises him to propose nuptials if he would like to keep her. Um, fuck. I want to say it's put a ring on it because I don't really know no other bitches asking niggas to get married right away. <laughs> um, I'm going to just say put a ring on it. Well, I'm going to give that to you because right. you have the song right. You just don't have the title right. So I'm going I'm to be straight up. It's called Single Ladies, but you're right. Oh, yeah. Single Ladies. It's Boom, Single Ladies. Fin, 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 fin. Be yep. Hill beat me five to four. Yes. Good job. Yes. Good job. Yes. Good job. Uh, hey man i want to thank y'all for subscribing to the show b hill is crowned king mm-hmm. of of a free smoke and i didn't want to today. do this game that's the wild part about it. Exactly. shout out to you for making me do it that's how my life works oh that's dope we can we can we can do it again at another time with like yeah, movies or sure. something like that for sure oh but thank y'all for um yeah, thank y'all for listening, man. Make sure y'all subscribe to the show. And, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend. Uh, we are at the Ain't Shit Show, show. That's the X word that I will be remembered at. And we're on social. So make sure y'all hit us up on Twitter, IG, Facebook, uh, Instagram, all of those places. And you can listen to us wherever podcasts are streaming. Um I want y'all, I always want to leave y'all with a quote. I got mixed up right here because I was streaming. Um, so the quote for today is, if you want it, go for it. Take a risk. Don't always play it safe or you'll die wondering. Until next time, I want y'all to be great. The marathon to continues, man. Rip, Rip nip. nip. Rip nip. And we out. <laughs> Thank you.